All right, give whenever you're ready. Sweat off me brown. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Procrastinators Podcast. Hello, this is this is us. We have a special guest today, um, Gamers Tavern. Here he yeah. is. Yeah. Woo. Hello. Hello. Woo. Gamers yeah. Tavern is. <laughs> Gamers Tavern is a uh, reviewer of video games and does Let's Plays, which is the topic of today's uh, podcast. And with me, Hypocrite, we have other members of the show who are usually You're here. an expert at this. I, I really am good, <laughs> aren't I? He knows what he's doing. Uh, Where'd you get that degree? Have... The fucking trash bin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, he, and Fuck here up. we have Munchie Jones. Welcome to the only podcast on the internet where one-sixth of its host consistently has severe mold-induced respiratory issues. <laughs> I cannot breathe right now. There's too much uh, mold in my room. Oh, no. Uh, we have Tom Oliver. Hello! I have risen from the grave to bring you more fantastic ramblings. We have Best Guy Ever. It's about that time, everybody. And we have Ben Saint. <laughs> Discord, I'm howling at the moon. <laughs> and the <laughs> middle of the summer afternoon. Discord, Discord. Remember, whatever, remember whatever did we do you to make Take, take my pain away. away. All, right, all right, all right, now... Uh, I, guess, I guess I should have left Gamers Tavern at the end. I'll we'll, we'll reintroduce him. Gamers Tavern mm-hmm. is here. Hey. Woo! There he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're <laughs> happy to have that... you. We, I, I, I'd just like to say right off the bat that I and, and a bunch of us here are, are longtime fans of Gamers Tavern, a tragically underappreciated channel who uh, back in the day was was putting out some really great, some really enjoyable Let's Play content. There can be no you doubt. Can no it, doubt. Um, link no in the doubt. description to his channel. Please well, I'm check flat- it out. very flattered to hear that. We, I think, uh, at the very least, I think Jesse originally was the guy who found your content first. Is that is that accurate? Was Kim? it? Is that, is that true? I, I think it was me or Jesse who found this content. Okay, and we shared it uh, amongst ourselves, and we said, uh, "This guy is is got the best dry comedy." Like. Um, I think that's what you call it, dry comedy. Like like uh, yeah, uh, uh, like let's plays of of just the. It was so funny. Like we were laughing the whole time. It was great. It, we loved your videos so much, and uh, I would and like we, we subscribed and we watched your podcasts and we love mm-hmm. Gamers Ten. Mm-hmm. We said, hey, I would thanks, like to, I, I would like to throw out that I unequivocally wish to preemptively crown Gamers Tavern the king of Let's Plays. I have not <laughs> seen one that's better. It is, uh, you guys, you have to watch, please go watch some of his videos, like his Sonic Let's Plays, or any of them, the uh, the Rocket Knight Adventures. We got, we the, got Rocket me, Knight, Kirby, Sonic, yep. um, um, there's more, I'm, for, I'm, I'm blanking. L- I think there's might. a whole bunch. Yeah, Listeners, um, just look inside your heart and think, do, do you want unscripted, uh, unscripted podcast-like uh, banter between two unqualified, unprofessional internet hacks long since their prime, like the DigiBros or the Game Grump? <laughs> or do you, want, do, do you want masterfully paced, beautifully executed, pure art Let's Plays such as the Gamer Tavern offers? The puns are off the charts, and so is the quality. Mr. Tavern, I'm curious. Mr. How Tavern? would you describe that's that's his official name and title? Please be respectful, everyone. Mr. Tavern, how would you describe your Let's Play style? Uh, I don't really know. I just, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I just uh, think up of things that are funny, and I just try to do them. I <laughs> I've been dying it's to perfect. ask you for years, at years at this wait, point. Wait, wait. I think I know what so, you're going to ask because I was just about okay, to ask ahead. the same thing. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, were, were you going to ask um, whether whether he uh, whether whether he does them right right as he's doing it, or yeah, if he goes yeah. back is, over is and dubs over them? Is it off the cuff, or is it or is it dubbed in after? Because mm-hmm. it's so tight, uh, like like your 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 lines, like just the stuff you say is like so <laughs> tight, one after another, and it's mm-hmm. really funny. And I, I've I I feel like it has to be it has to be scripted, or it, it has, it to, has be, like, to be scripted. It has to be put in afterwards. <laughs> uh, well, you're you're correct on on both of those accounts. Uh, it's post commentary, mm-hmm. so it's done after I record the gameplay footage. Okay. And okay. it is scripted. Okay. Fan 
fantastic. And, and, and as we've established in the pre-show, by the way, Ben Saint devalues all scripted content and, <laughs> and, and, and reviews any rehearsed media as invalid and, and, and worthless artistically. So uh, that's yeah, the true. major I mean, problems here. I mean, it's it's less. You know, it's made less. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing that that the champion heralded comic never had a script at all, and then yeah, just drew bubbles the, in. The champion was just... all improv. <laughs> Um, you know, my it, whole life is just a big improv. <laughs> that's true. That's true. A tanking improv session yeah. one day at a time. <laughs> I've gone wrong. Um, well, if I, uh, if I could be fu- uh, that funny without a script, I certainly uh, would. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I, um, of course. I, I just want to share. I, I, I don't know if you remember uh, Mr. Mr. T uh, for short. <laughs> um, but that I, I, I like I, that. there was one occasion where I hooked up at the, the old house I lived in with a bunch of friends. I hooked up a, a, a projector and we, we projected your Let's Plays onto the wall. And we Whoa. all just like hung, we all Aww. hung out for the evening and just and just um, just relaxed to the sounds of Gamers Tavern. It was really great. And I, I tweeted a picture of it. Um, yeah, actually, I remember seeing that. I saw that on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh, That's man. awesome. Thanks. Uh, you know what's what's great about your your content? Okay, so guys, in case we haven't made it clear, the the whole shtick that Gamers Tavern does is he's 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 got you know his let's play footage that he's playing games, and he just mercilessly, Non-stop unyieldingly, one puns. after another after another, just lambasts you with puns unceasing uh, unpitiless uh, or p- pitiless well, I merciless mean, puns it's, it's not all puns but there are there okay, are not, quite not a few. The, it's not all not puns every but single some one. of it's, some of it is just is just commentary on the game which is also cool i um, sometimes what i love about it is is <laughs> mm-hmm. that it's not like completely like there's no the it, there is like comedic timing and pauses in between the jokes that is just mm-hmm. long enough for it to to feel like you know a realistic pause, which is why people like why we were wondering whether you do it off the cuff because there's like you know you're playing the game and there's a pause that is like it's not so long that it's like nothing is happening, but it's long enough to make it everything really funny and just to, like and not like you just you know you just sit back and you it's... just let it all wash over you. It's almost sort of anti-humor in the sense that, like, the pauses are just long enough to give you room to breathe in between the puns. At least for, for my favorite of your videos. I always think of, like, the Sonic ones uh, when you're on, like, the ice levels. Ice to meet you. <laughs> oh, it's perfect snow, impression. snow yeah, problem. Something how, uh, how I sound. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's something, like something it's like, like an Andy Warhol. If I is that wait is that the right? Who, who's I, the guy who? Uh, that's the can who, Who's guy. the guy who Jim Carrey played? Uh, 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 Kaufman. Jim Carrey Andy played, Kaufman. A- Andy Kaufman. That's the one. It's almost Andy Kaufman's style of like anti humor because the puns are super. You know, Cheesy. they're just incredibly obvious. But it's the way that they're done, just over and over and over again, just builds up this like it doesn't it doesn't start. It's a slow build until eventually you just hit this. Peak, like this combo of just hilarity after one after Some, another. Sometime, it's such an experience. I, I don't know what it is. Sometimes, but with your delivery, it sounds almost like like you'll you'll make a pun, and then like the one I remember is I, I think I remember you made a bunch of cloud puns about when um when yeah. Kirby is walking around in the clouds. Like you'll make a cloud <laughs> pun, and then there'll be a pause, and then you'll kind of you'll come back in with your dry delivery, and you'll make some more, and it's like. It's it's like it's almost like a self aware kind of like, well, I made one, I have to make some more. I'm just gonna do it, I guess. Uh, it's do, do you feel that kind of compulsion to just keep going with the theme as long as possible? Is there? Yeah. What's your what's your thought process as you're coming up with these? Do, is it just really just I'm going to keep doing this as long as it's on screen? I'll just keep making the joke about clouds or ice or whatever it might be. Uh, yeah, it's something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, to me, I feel like, uh, what's the point of watching a Let's Play anymore if the commentary isn't funny or interesting? Damn right. Absolutely. So, Damn right. um, I work really hard to always have something to say about whatever's on screen or maybe, uh, you know, just jokes or puns or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, I have to find inspiration somewhere. So I kind of look at what's on screen. Mm-hmm. And uh, I try to make puns about it, <laughs> and then when it's not on screen anymore, I make puns about whatever else ends up being on screen later. Yeah, and it's <laughs> and then sometimes I'll make jokes. And it's usually <laughs> bad ones. I love the distinction between puns and jokes. Yes, mm-hmm. 
I feel like I'm oh, getting they're, played they're, right now. I mix, feel like you're on a higher a level and you're memeing me <laughs> at this very moment. It's like I'm just not, I don't know, like you're, you're some sort of ancient Egyptian alien pharaoh who understands things in a higher plane than I do. We, we've only read about the Schemer's Tavern on, 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 on pyramid walls in ancient hieroglyphs. And now, and now exactly. we, we, we've done the summoning circle. We have him here today. and We can hardly believe it. <laughs> it's an honor. Well, uh, I guess ancient manuscripts describes me well because uh, <laughs> I, uh, I started my website in, in mm-hmm. 2002. Whoa. Yeah, we should talk YouTube about that. Existed. Mm-hmm. that. That's pretty impressive. And I'm actually looking here. Um, you haven't updated, I think, a lot of your Let's Plays in, in, in a little while. But I'm looking at your review updates, and you put out your Golden Axe Warrior one, uh, what, like three, four days ago or something? And then like uh, two weeks or so before that, Axe Battler, two weeks before that. Um, Golden Axe, the duel. So you you really churn these things out on your website. I haven't really read too many of them myself, but uh, I, it, it, is this more of your passion, or this more of your interest, kind of doing the reviews as opposed to the let's plays? Well, uh, that's where I started. Mm-hmm. You know, I started writing reviews back in uh, two thousand and three. I started a website in two thousand and two, but the first review mm-hmm. I published in two thousand and three, which. Uh, that's also when I first named the website uh, Gamers Tavern. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. before that, I didn't really have a name or a design. Uh, before that, it was basically like uh, those old GeoCity sites right. from the late 90s. <laughs> That's how it looked like. Just full of anime yeah. GIFs, no doubt, I'm sure. <laughs> well, actually, it was even less than that. It was basically a black background uh-huh. with red text to make your eyes oh, bleed. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yes. The most delicious... No, I, mean, I had I had an old for. website just like that, so we would have been brothers in arms back in the day. <laughs> Gaia online. Yeah, so I just didn't have the the good sense to stop. You know, I kept <laughs> it going uh, for over fifteen years. That's... I'm curious what your professional background is. Do you have any like programming or any is your is your field of work re- related to this in, in any kind of capacity? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know a little bit of programming. Obviously, mm-hmm. I know uh, web, HTML stuff, right, CSS, right. and uh, things of that nature. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I mean, okay. I mean, we've gone pretty in-depth with your content, which obviously we all love. Maybe we should open up the, the, the floor a little bit and, and just see what we feel we- about... I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of want to talk about things like other popular Let's Plays in comparison to Gamer's Tavern, and why he is vastly superior I by mean, every <laughs> metric. There's, there's a few ways to make a Let's Play, and true, a bunch of I us. Think, I mean, a bunch of us have done it, so we've got we've got yeah. insights. Mm-hmm. We've got I our mean, own... the the legendary T-Bat plays cannot be questioned <laughs> as the pinnacle of all Let's Plays. It's just that they've retired, so I, I, you know. I think, I think I've told this before, but uh, at uh-huh. the peak at, at the peak of all of that, of my involvement with the Horseshoe Crew and my and my oh. and my and my you know my uh, whole deal with those with those bastards, I I mm-hmm. uh, I tried watching T-Bat plays and I couldn't get past <laughs> one episode, and I quit halfway through because it was the worst video I'd ever seen in my life, and I was so <laughs> bewildered and disappointed that I couldn't even stand looking at my computer anymore, and I had to, I had to go for a walk. I, I couldn't believe what I had witnessed. <laughs> your um, your, I, your I did, heroes had let you down. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it literally, exactly. I was like, I, I couldn't believe that Phantom or Keg did this. Like, what happened? Like, like do they have a Ghost Rider for the normal videos like what is happening <laughs> um yes jeez <laughs> i mean i didn't think they it was were, they were bad, bad man hey but they remember was. the first fighting game remember the one we did the fighting game like the very first episode we did that was on our main channel that eventually we ported over as like the first episode of t-bat plays yeah um that was that that was that sick like fighting is magic or whatever and uh that one i put a bunch of like edits in and was pretty sick yeah that one was good that was a quality I- Quality thing. I mean, uh, uh, maybe I'm crazy, but I enjoyed T Bat plays Equestria Bound. Yeah, but, uh, over a hundred episodes. <laughs> a hun- over a hundred. We were ha- we were having time. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you <laughs> yeah know, I guess that's one way to phrase it. <laughs> think, think about it now, that's like uh, it's kind of weird that there is so much content that I have not consumed because 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 I because uh, I'm normally the uh, the the content miner. I I mine I mine as much content a, as I produce Bitcoin on my on, on my computer. But mm-hmm. uh, I I, don't, I like was there well, anything worth l- let me to let me those or let, was it see, all see that's shit? the thing. The, the Let's Plays come in a few camps, and T-Bat Plays is probably, is easily the, the, the champion one. of the disgu- of the terrible Let's Play camp. It <laughs> okay, is great. not good. It is, it like, we simply describe the things happening on screen well, and, like, talk about, you I know, think it's that boring. the true boring. nadir of T-Bat mm. Plays was um, mm. 
uh, T-Bat plays super lesbian horse RPG because no, that no, game, I liked that. I that thought you. I thought it was terrible because the game was really text heavy, and a lot of what we did was just reading text on the screen. <laughs> oh, at least my we did God. voices. Back. We, at we, least we, we, we did. A yeah, we, we, we did some voices, but like, how long do oh, those stay no. interesting? Really? How I, I, well, how long know. will a funny voice buoy? I, yeah, a, I will a tell piece you this though. I'll tell you this though, Ben. The only video I ever go back to watch from T Bat plays is the finale. Of uh of of horseshoe whatever super lesbian, lesbian horse, horse RPG. RPG when when the uh, Anamanaguchi song drops at the end and it's us reacting to it that was that was a, that was good that was do you, I like do you that. actually I, go I back that. and revisit that that one moment yes I do I, I have several times I have not but that's interesting uh, maybe it's I good. will I recommend maybe it. I will just for old times sake it, it it's slightly off topic it's it's always funny to see what kind of weird like not important, not grandiose videos that we all secretly have an affinity for and go back and listen to from our past. Yeah. Like, 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 like that, that episode I'm sure does not rake in the, the views. I'm sure it is not that popular nope. or that like remembered mm-hmm. or celebrated, but there's just something mm-hmm. about it that will just stick out in your mind forever. I have a lot of views that like that from the past. That don't yeah. matter. Like, like measurement man. I fucking love measurement man. Measurement <laughs> oh, man yeah, is my shit. Course. I love that video. Oh yeah. I, I forget. I forget which episode it's from, but the moment, I mean, I put this in one of my videos because I loved it so much, but it's when, fuck, it's the, dude, what the freak? Like, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. one moment of Digi's yeah. is so great. Um, well, okay. Yeah, I, what do you guys think of the game grown? Uh, game grown. Oh, Wait, are you okay. going to say something first? Well, yeah, go ahead. I, I'll go talk ahead. about game grumps. Um, mm-hmm. okay. the, the game grumps introduced me to the idea that Let's Plays were not terrible. Um, <laughs> because before that, really before that, I had only that I had I only ever heard ridiculous. of the of the idea of like let's plays. I'd seen things on the side of YouTube. We all used like, to trash them that? quite a bit. We let's would, we would talk this. a lot of shit. Why would I want to watch someone else play a game? Mm-hmm. And um, Game Grumps, they were just really funny from day one. I saw I saw the video from Ego Raptor linking to it, and I mm-hmm. clicked on it, and it was great. And though and, and to this day, I think. There hasn't been like a daily upload Let's Play show that Aaron, is good. Aaron, we got Even a start slightly. a nation just for the white race. Aaron, oh my that's that's John for you. Yeah, yeah I guess so. so. <laughs> uh, Gamers Tavern, do you have any uh, experience watching other le- uh, other Let's Plays? <laughs> uh, loads. Uh, yeah, which uh, ones? I've been watching. Uh, oh yeah. Been watching them since uh, two thousand and eight or two thousand and seven or something like that. Uh, but I got uh, I kind of lost interest in watching them because uh, you know once the novelty wore off, kind of found them boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, that's but the there, there is one um, one guy in particular I like still. Mm-hmm. Uh, one let's player, and if you like my stuff, you'll probably like his stuff uh, a lot as well. His name is uh, Karma Jolt. Hmm. I don't know if you heard of him. Probably not because he only has like five hundred subscribers. Googling him. Um. But he's really uh, funny, and he does the same scripted style of commentary that I do. How do you spell and that? He's been doing it before. Uh, uh, karma Jolt is just, you know, the word karma and Oh, jolt. Karma Jolt. Okay. Oh, God. His right. last video one month ago is channel update moving on. Oh, oh no. no. We caught him at the tail end. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, he's not quitting. He's just uh, oh, on a break. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Glad to hear it. <laughs> he kind of updates infrequently, kind of like me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's more accurate to say that I'm kind of like him because he came before I did. Oh, he must be old school. As far as let's yeah, plays wow. are concerned. Yeah, wow. If he came before I mean, you, that mu- he must. I mean, be I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like thirty videos uploaded over the course of a month. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, he's recently he's out. been updating uh, more frequently. He sure has. And uh, his recent videos aren't uh, scripted. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, so Ben would like stuff. them, is what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'd be, they'd yeah, be vastly so. superior. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just in principle. Uh, I, I would just like to mention for the crowd, so I can be, I can be vaunted and approved of in in mm-hmm. the comment section. I'm one of, I, I will wear on my badge, much like Holocaust victims wore the the golden Juden star on their Indeed. on their shirt proudly. I, w- I will wear the badge of being one of the few people who found Game Grumps through John first, and and and, and I and I clicked on his link from wow. his channel. Talk talk about I know. gamer cred. Talk I know, about dude, gamer cred. I know. Mm-hmm. I, I was a fan of John before. 
before. And I was like, John knows Eagle Raptor. Eagle Raptor like has friends and is like a person <laughs> that like exists in the physical material world. I I'm <laughs> losing my shit, and I couldn't believe that 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 my rinky dink uh uh god god king John Tron knew Eagle Raptor. It, it, it obliterated my perception of reality. It was incredible. How big was John at that time? Was he like a five hundred thousand kind of guy or something? He was, he was, he was like no, no. Kid. It was like yeah, ten thousand, fifty thousand, sort of. Jeez, when he made Game Grumps, he was that size. He yeah. was not big. He got big God from Reddit, damn. and there was like a you know a big a big front page post, and he got like a couple thousand subscribers from. Well, not couple, like like Jeez. maybe ten thousand, twenty thousand subscribers. And Game Grumps is what like five years old now or something. Mm-hmm. Yep. Damn. What do you know? What do you know? Uh, the the thing with like. Let's plays. I feel like there's 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 certain types, and it's it it they usually fall into to two main categories. One is um, about the game, and the other is about the personalities. Mm-hmm. And you can sort of there's the, you can sort of like mix and match like like a slider. Like, are you talking about the game more, and mm-hmm. or are you talk are you just playing a game and not even talking? You're just talking, and it's got gameplay in the background. TBAP, I feel like was talking about the game. Which is why I didn't find it that interesting because I would rather yeah. listen to you talk about cool things, and then th- mm-hmm. things like um, Digi's Let's Plays were mostly not about the game at all. Victor would Digi's be playing were way something, better. Digi's Digi's were were great. Did, did, and he was Digi just Bros talking about stuff, stuff mm-hmm. and he, he even called it a podcast. Yeah, yeah. and like um, Game Grumps was about uh, the personalities, but it, it, after a certain point, you they got they they run out of stuff to say. They just it's, well, it's, a, a few life things changed for the, for those boys, and they had to, uh, you know, change. Like, for Digibros, they had, they had to, like, you know... It wasn't just they ran out of things to say. Oh, no, no, not Digi. I was thinking about oh, Game okay. Grumps, but yeah. Oh, oh uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Were well, you talking about, like, the JonTron leaving stuff? Is that no, what I'm, th- I'm talking about... about well, I mean, at the end Dan- of the JonTron era, that it was mm-hmm. sort of winding down as well. And then like, Dan era, as you call as yeah. we call it... Uh, it was also sort of like, yeah. Occasionally, I'll click on a Game Grumps, but most uh, it used to be I would watch every single episode because they were always really uh, funny bits. But now I they're watched, like, you... s- spread out. I I started watching Grumps like pretty sh- like a little bit after John left, and mm-hmm. uh, I got into Dan and I, I listened to a lot of like the the early Dan stuff and I really liked yeah. it. But same, yeah, same. It, eventually, eventually it came to be like I feel like we're we're now like revisiting old topics, or we're just talking about nothing, you know? Yeah. Mm, well, it, mm. it's just it's been every day for like years at this point. Like, like human experiences and lives are li- are like a, a a physical what's the word F- like fossil fuel mine. Like, eventually it will mm. all be used up. All of your experiences, you 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 all of the reminiscing you do is is like a, a plus one Bitcoin you are mining, and and you will eventually run out of life experiences. That graphics to... card is gonna wear out. It, it, you're gonna it, need exactly, to stock up. exactly. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you're not gonna be able to. Uh, uh, you know, fucking uh, and survive I, on that for that long, and, and they've just been talking nonstop every fucking day for years. Of yeah. course, it's just going to become nothing. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes so, sense. like, there's 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 ways for like the 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 um, personality driven let's plays to get old because the personalities are yeah. uh, overexposed uh, to like the internet. Like people just see them over and over, and then they run out of. They run out of like, uh, yeah, you've been hanging around my house for too long. Go away, you know that sort of feeling. You know that's why. But then, that's but then I, the the, I, the yeah, opposite is, is when the the ga- like it's usually things like Gamers Tavern or maybe even like some of Spoonie's uh, early Let's Plays, where mm-hmm. it's either like a hybrid or like entirely scripted, and talking about the stuff on the screen to the point where it can't it can't really get old because as long as it's funny. You know, as long as you th- find a way to, to, to continue to make it funny, you can keep doing mm-hmm. those forever. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like, uh, like, I know the Game Grumps at certain points, and maybe still, were taking, like, uh, like comedy classes, like professional actual, you know, like acting classes and, and that kind of stuff. Oh, yes. So, like, it seems like they're, uh, by doing that, they're kind of preparing themselves for, like, a long term, actually delivering, like, a show and working on, like, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Extemporaneous comedy or um, whatever it is. Yeah, imp- uh, improv. I- improv, exactly, Impro- improv. And then, like, in the same way, like, Gamers Tavern here, for example, like, the way he, like, 
you know, write scripts and stuff. And I suppose it's a little bit different than just like live uh, Let's Plays or anything. But he's also, he's like generating content with which he, you know, will stick in his episodes versus when you, as Munchie was saying, if you just talk about your life, you will definitely at some point just run out of interesting things to say, which I think is a lot of people have experienced that with Game Grumps. If, if, if you do degree. that for long mm-hmm. enough, and if, you, if, and if you do Let's Plays, you know, a, a lot of the time like a Game Grumps yeah. does, then your life becomes telling stories about your life. So once you Indeed. tell your eventual life story, and then you get to the part where you start Let's Play, what are you going to say? Like, like, oh, remember the story that I told? Wasn't it funny how I told that? Remember that one time we played a game on the show? Wasn't that crazy? Yeah. That will be your story. Yeah. Yeah, and then it just gets less and less like interesting, because it's less and less like fresh new information for people. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it, you, you really got to, to do something to like, maybe you just like take a break, for, I don't know, maybe even for a year, and then just like go live a life and have experiences. Then, I mean, you'll have built up some experiences that you can bring back and just like dump onto the table again. So that's, maybe that's the cycle. Is it, maybe it's inevitable that that uh, happened. Well, the problem with, style. I feel like that's like a good idea to like make good content is like, oh, take a break, experience mm-hmm. two things, come back with a fresh perspective. The problem is, like, you just basically torpedo your entire business doing that. Because, like, if you stop for a you. week, YouTube will fucking kill you. Mm-hmm. So, like, you have to be on their dick 24-7 it, or the algorithm will murder you. Well, what, what about this as a theoretical business model? Like, a, a Game Grump style channel where you have, like, hosts maybe kind of cycling in and out of the channel. So the channel is always putting out content, but the individual contributors have time to go off and kind you of, you know, mine Bitcoin. And then you can remove the game entirely and just have it be the people talking. And then, and then you can, you know, you can cycle through the, uh, the members <laughs> and eventually. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. The members will it's kind of like it's too fancy to actually join, so it'll just be a consistent group of people because no one will be bothered to show fucking up when we. <laughs> yeah, you know. Eventually, time. the yeah, hosts yeah, just start good. procrastinating. You know, it's oh. how, it's it's a fucking it's a it's a disaster. It's a disaster. Lol, uh, I get it. <laughs> I, I, I would like to bring up moment uh-huh. depending on depending on how many tomatoes are, are thrown my way. I'd like to bring mm-hmm. up the shitty juvenile. Uh, uh, embarrassing that I would even talk about this topic of Game Grumps drama. Uh, just uh, what, okay. what happened? I, I, I'm st- I, I'm the, I'm the kind of guy. Uh, I, I will not. Here. Be, I will not be. Uh, you know. I won't be shy about this fact. I am the kind of guy who, when John, uh, you know, left, I, I was the kind of guy who was like mm-hmm. typing like like haunted Game Grumps ARG. Explain explain <laughs> to me the, the, I, the, right. this, this gotta... haunted mansion story. I, this is a good opportunity for me to, to reveal the truth, because John oh. is me, and I have told myself the truth, <laughs> and here's what had happened. Uh, John and Aaron, they started uh, Game Grumps, and then... He hit they made Susie, a bunch of... didn't he? Huh? <laughs> he, <laughs> he hit Susie. Susie, yeah. He beat uh, Susie to shit. Yeah, she's a zombie now. Um, <laughs> John and Aaron started the Game Grumps, and they didn't know it was going to be a big thing. And then it was, right. and then they had to start... A, they made a joint bank account to have uh, funds Ooh. go from that so they could both thing. Um, mm-hmm. But there's, like, hints here and there that John... I mean, you know, Freudian slips, but, like, he, he thought of it as his show. So what I think happened, this is mm. all, like, out of, out of my brain, is that John wanted to stop Game Grumps because he wanted to work more on JonTron. He also mm-hmm. wanted to go to New York because the Continue guys were there and a girl he was talking to was over there and he wanted to go Ooh, live baby. with her. <laughs> and so what John said is like Her name? I love Kim Possible. Oh, okay. <laughs> go on. Uh, and then what he did is he said, Okay, I wanna quit the Game Grumps but he didn't just say that. He wanted and Game Grumps to end. And Aaron was like, Well wait, why can't we just continue without you? And he's like, Well, I don't know. I don't w I and it's like yeah, there was a big yeah. argument. Because that John wanted it to be ended. And Aaron wanted to continue without John, and John was like, fuck you, and he left. And that's why they were angry at each other. And then uh, um, Danny was brought in to replace him, and nobody really wanted to talk about it. Aaron didn't mm-hmm. want to make John look like an evil piece of shit, and John didn't want to make Aaron look like a piece of shit, so they just both kept quiet, and it became really awkward. And that's what I think happened. If Danny and then, of course, smaller, eventually... Things eventually warmed up, and they, you know, are talking, and, you know, they run the Star Wars thing together, so things obviously If Danny improve. was smaller, I could brush my teeth with them. <laughs> well, if Danny that was a smaller, nice little... he'd be me. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah. he's just like you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a good little summary of the whole thing. I think we, at this point, we pretty much all know Proof. all the details. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that I mean, I still think, 
you know, Susie, you know, talking sexy time. Uh, but no. <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, on why. top of all that, uh, John was fucking Susie the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was always but, but there. But that didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. There's the hot yeah, goss really. I came here for. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Well, uh, c- cool. All right. So, I mean, are there any other Let's Players? What about the Yahtzee? Uh, Who talked uh, about... Yeah, people were big oh, fans of Yahtzee, um, right? Yahtzee, Yahtzee and, the, and the... Um, oh God, what were... There was the ego The insufferable reviews. game social media crapcast, right? Uh, no. Hang on. Uh, God, what, what was the name of Yahtzee's about? Let's Play show that he did with that fuckface Gabe? Oh, was it... Uh, uh, I think it was called uh, Let's Drown Out. Yeah, yeah, That's Let's the Drown one. Out. Uh, That's I'm the also one. a fan of uh, Yahtzee's uh, reviews. Yeah, of course, me yeah, too. Yeah, I love Yahtzee. He's great, mm-hmm. and I really like Let's Drown Out. And I don't even mind his co-host Gabe most of the time. It's just sometimes <laughs> I just get the feeling that he's the biggest douchebag, and I hate him. It, <laughs> in what way? In what way? Is well, this Gabe okay. of Penny Arcade like, fame? Like they they are uh, they'll argue a bunch. And Wait, is that Gabe from Penny Arcade? Is n- that who that no, is? No, no, it's an Australian no. guy. Um, oh, okay. They'll, they'll okay. argue a bunch, and um, like Yahtzee will accuse Gabe of waffling. Like Gabe will say something, and uh, <laughs> and Yahtzee will be like, "Well, I don't think that's true," and Gabe will be like, "Well, neither do I." But da 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 da, and mm-hmm. Gabe will be like, "You're waffling. Like, like just just out with it. You're waffling." Gabe will be like, "Fuck <laughs> you. I'm not waffling. I'm just saying what I think." And like, I always agree with Yahtzee. Gabe is a total waffler. <laughs> And, just like fucking John Kerry, and, and gotta, he'll just g- g- Gable him. just Gable just like a- apropos. He'll he'll talk about he'll talk about how he's like studying to be a teacher at like it's really important and relevant to like anything that's going on, and it never is. And it's, oh, I can't <laughs> I can't fucking stand. Did, him. did he ever become that teacher? Did Not he do it to the best of my knowledge. By the way, I'm looking at the channel right now. The last Let's Drown Out I can see was uploaded over a year ago. Oh wait, wait, no one. Oh wait, yep, a year ago. Oh, yep. Looks like they stopped. Looks like they stopped. <clears throat> I guess they stopped tell. because uh, Yahtzee moved to uh, America, I think. He did. That's news to me. That's cool. He's, yeah. he's, he's on Yahtzee. our soil. We can uh, track I him down. Yahtzee once. If, if, met, if, r- if we're just listing cool. off the people who we who we watched or, or you mm-hmm. know do watch currently, I, I'm in the classy, you know, Electrical Beast, Billy MC, you know, Lime Popsicle, my, my, my personal giants of the industry. Uh, you know, I I I, uh, I I I I I wouldn't be where I am today without watching Billy MC's uh, in- incredible uh, spine cracking Mario Let's Plays. Uh, those... I'm sorry. Are you saying <laughs> Bill Billy MC? Yeah, Billy. You don't know who Billy MC is? I don't think so. Billy oh, yeah. Billiam, like William, it... but with a B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it, here, here, Gamers Tab. You know who Billy MC is, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about him? Uh, I think he's great, but uh, he doesn't appear to be aware of it. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Huh. Can you extrapolate on that a little bit? I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, gamers. <laughs> I, I, you gotta yeah. you gotta watch uh, Red Soup Prey to find yeah, out. Yeah, I was just about to say I, I watch Red Soup Prey all the time. I kind of stopped since they started doing like weird Kickstarter videos. I wasn't too into those, but I but I love hmm. Let's, I love Red Soup Prey. I know about all uh, you know shit through there. Let, uh, Red Soup Prey, if, if, uh, if to my hmm. knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, you understand, but uh, Red Soup Prey is sort of a. Uh, it's it's a commentary channel where they take let's plays and then they mm-hmm. commentate over the let's plays and these uh, let's plays are of dubious quality at best. Are we and, talking about like uh, like uh, the greatest let's player of all time, Dark Side Phil, with his uh, 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 how not to play kind of like those? Uh, I, I, I suppose no. so. Those are or, commentated. These are these. This is like they're like mm-hmm. they're like. Um, a mystery science theater three thousand ing these yes. let's plays yes well that's kind of well, okay, okay fair enough fair enough uh, and, um, and, and, and yeah. the thing that's interesting about it is I, I, I'm I'm fairly certain that one of the co-hosts is the guy who like invented let's play uh, yeah, yeah his name like, is uh, slow beef slow or beef, I think yeah, he, yeah. it was either slow beef or diabetes hmm. that did the first let's play <laughs> I I, I, th- I, th- I think it's slow beef I think it's slow beef yeah it was slow beef mm-hmm. yeah. well. And and, uh, and and so it's so it's interesting to see like like this guy who like created this like weird like cultural worldwide phenomenon looking at like mm-hmm. the sh- the worst of the worst of his spawn and ridiculing <laughs> them extensively. It's you know that is I, a I fantastic angle. Yeah, is yeah. is he is he popular for with this series? Red uh, is pretty big. Yeah, yeah, they're is pretty he? big. Okay, I've yeah, seen some. Oh, I've seen some. Uh, uh, I, they I don't do actual Red that much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm not sure why. I just realized that Retsu Play is a is a joke on Let's Play. Uh, yeah. Uh, J- yeah, Japan. that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. I, I, uh, I would uh, highly recommend a lot of old ones. I, I, my favorite one is... Uh, the Billy MC here, ones are good. Yeah, yeah the Billy MC mm-hmm. ones are great. My favorite one is When You're Here, Your Family. I fucking love that one. Because These all sound fantastic. I want to watch all yeah. of them. Please, please uh, but do. Can, it, I think it's time that we crack open the nut I referenced earlier and talk about the unequivocally greatest Let's Player in the world, with, of course, the exception of Gamer's Tavern here, uh, and, and the, the king of hate and the original fighting uh, game master. And it's, it's Dark Side Phil. Dark yeah. Side fucking Phil. He, sure is, is. he is the only V-approved YouTuber. The only one. He is incredible. He is a god. A Gamer's Tavern, what is your take on Dark Side Phil, if you're familiar with his work? Uh, I've heard of him, but I'm mm-hmm. I'm honestly not very familiar with uh, the guy. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, okay. F- fair enough. Fair. I mean, you're, you've been spared uh, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd just like to throw out. Actually, you know what? I won't say that. You know, okay. I will. I will say it since I brought it up. But someone just linked me this very morning, saying that for the second time, Gib, <laughs> your creaky haunted house needs to <laughs> shut up. We're recording our podcast. Um, uh, uh, they say Dark Side Phil was caught masturbating on stream for what the second the time fuck? ever. Okay, I, I uh, like I, I, that is not that is not yeah. real. I don't think because it, it was just audio. He could have just been yawning loudly. So frankly, I think people are exaggerating with that. But he definitely did one time. You're, you're How? Definitely did one time. I am not familiar with this phenomenon. Mm-hmm. How does one even? My make yawns sound like orgasms. Uh, There's something wrong with your yawns. Uh, uh, oh! <laughs> that's, that's how I yawn. That's how I yawn. Oh, um, I mean, you know, when you when you stream like all day, every day, you know, sometimes you make a slip up. It seems. Yeah, I you mean, leave your camera just, on, and you it's just. You know, mm-hmm. just the other day, just the other day, I had just finished a live stream and, you know, me and the missus were getting up to some activities naked. and, you know, I was kind of petrified. I had continued to stream by by, a, you know, but but luckily I had not. But it, it's just as easy as for getting to click one button sometime. Yeah. And there you go. And this then is why you're no one should meme. ever live stream. It's the worst. This is, I idea thought you were going to say no history. one should associate with women. Concentration no, um, camps now. You know, that's all I'm saying. You know, that's, I'm that's that's a safe thing, too. But. <laughs> um, Dark Side Phil is a legend, and it, it, it's kind of amazing to watch him. He's gone through so many ups and downs over his career. He really is a, uh, uh, he's like a slightly, well, okay, honestly, significantly more together uh, version of like Christian Weston Chandler. Uh, but like, he has his own massive weaknesses as a man. Like, he, He's terrible with money. He, like, is not... When he started to get big, like, doing Let's Plays and stuff, he just, like, bought a big old house and, like, a new car or something and moved out, I don't know, like, to Seattle or something. And just, like... And now he's paying for it. Like, his girlfriend left him a little while ago. I don't know exactly what... I don't, I don't want to speculate on his life too much. I just want to state the facts here. And the fact are that he overextended himself and continues to bring up how, like, he... Is one of the he is one of the guys who started like Let's Plays and uh, before it got big and you know continued it getting well. I don't know if he was. Uh, it sounds like this Retsu Prey guy is actually the first, but he was certainly one of the formative people on YouTube doing Let's Plays. And um, just to watch his life and to watch him be such a terrible, just like guy, kind of in general. I, I actually am in no way with like these assholes, the sons of Kojima. Who are like the, that whole crowd that like go they, they find like every reason to shit on the guy that I think is just like way beyond the pale and like not actually fair to him whatsoever. Like I hate when people take it too far. But the the tangible things he has done of just being such an asshole. And he tells the story one time of like what how, what an inconvenience his like girlfriend was for like something like having like a mental breakdown at work and like making him go like take care of her and stuff. Like <laughs> there it's entirely possible. That she was very inconsiderate at some point in that story. But the way that he told it certainly did not paint him with any degree of sympathy. And he sounds like a big asshole. Mm. So, but just, he's such such a character. I really want to dive in. And I, I've been thinking of doing a PCP lecture on him specifically. So let, let me know, people, oh, if, if that's something that interests you. For that. People, people really want that. They've been asking I think, for that. I think they do want it. <laughs> one day. One, I, I can't guarantee it for Radcon 3 or anything. But one day, I did, uh, I'll have to do it. I did see the, um, the down the rabbit hole about Dark Side Phil. 
Yes. Um, and my, my yes. only real exposure to him before that was through the uh, the let's the the how not to play with Dark Souls. And it I mean, is, I don't know how is, much I don't know how much you can infer about a guy based on like what he says while he's fucking playing Dark Souls or whatever. But he was sure. a huge asshole and just the r- most obnoxious dude. Like especially yeah. the way he would like mm-hmm. just he would blame the game. Like his blaming the game was uh, just the blaming chronic. the game is the biggest meme. It is the biggest meme about Dark Side Phil. It, it's and, and the wow really you know when the well, are you, you know, saying that it's not happens. true i am no no i'm completely agreeing with you he blames the game for like the vast majority of everything that goes wrong when see, he's playing see anything. the thing with yeah. that is that i like i do that, that you do it but too I, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, I mean i blame the A game like verbally but like when i calm down later i'm like well that was just me fucking up but, see like, not him not him he does okay. not it's his worldview that, like, the games cheat. <laughs> my, my, I know! My, my, my only exposure to Dark Side Phil uh, mm-hmm. was, like, knowing vaguely that he is not good at video games and then watching mm-hmm. several Street Fighter, uh, Street Fighter tournaments he was in where he kicked ass. Look, that's, look, that's uh, Dark Side Phil... Him. Dark Side Phil has been riding on this wave of being, like, a super sick, nasty uh, Street Fighter player... Like for his entire career, and like refuses to play anyone in it. It's it's exactly like the episode of Seinfeld where Jerry yeah. is like gonna race he, the guys, he, and he like he chooses not to play. He chooses so that, not so he, to play. So he doesn't yeah. lose his title. It's yeah, it's yeah. just like that. It's just like mm-hmm. and I, you know I honestly I honestly do not have that much hatred for the guy. He just seems like kind of a jerk. I actually respect him uh, in in a lot of ways. In other ways, I don't. You know, just because he seems kind of like a jerk. But, like, I mean, hey, man, he was out there. He was one of the pioneers of the Let's Players. He's this guy who realized, why don't I just set up my fucking camera behind me, film the TV that I'm playing games on, I, and upload these full Let's Plays? You know, I, it's, that's, that's I, creativity. I, I, I unironically love Cam Carter LPs. Like, like, when you can actually see the screen, it's, it's super comfy, and it's super fucking aesthetic. And sure. It, and, and it really, honestly, engrosses me. I, fuck, I fucking love Cam Carter LPs when they're, when, like, when, when, of course, you can actually see the screen. And it's not just, I just like, a gotta, blinding light. I gotta look up how many Let's Plays Dark Side Phil has uploaded on his channel. Okay, DSP Gaming has... Okay, no, sorry, that's the number of subs. Okay, I, I can't check right now, but I think he has, like, hundreds of thousands of uploads. Or, like, the most out of, like, anyone in all of YouTube. Some Something I, like that. It's oh, He's I been doing them, like, multiple times a day for, like, since, like, YouTube was young. Yeah, and we're talking, like, ten a day or something like that. Gee, for what the fuck? Ever. Because he, he splits up his Let's Plays into so many small individual parts. Let, let me just see what he's done today, or possibly you yesterday. Gotta, you gotta get those ad dollars, man. You gotta well, run an okay, ad let, on every video. Let me tell you how many videos were uploaded 11 hours ago. 1, 2, 3, 4, oh 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, what? 14 videos were uploaded 11 hours ago, and how about 16 hours ago, you might ask? 1, 2, 3, no. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 17 hours ago, 14, 15, 16, hang on, 17, 18, <laughs> okay, 19, 20. <laughs> so he's, he's uploading, he's uploading. 34 videos yesterday, 34 videos. He's That's uploading Jesus over Christ. over one video an hour. Like, one yeah, and a half videos an hour. That's insane. And they're, they're all, like, ten-minute, you know, snippets of this Let's Play. Just, wow. Um, un- unbelievable. See, that's, that's, is this that's actually like the a, brute this... force AdSense method right there. It, damn right it is. Is this the, like, most optimal way to do this? Because all these videos have, like, 150 views or so. No, I mean, they, it they is only just definitely out, not. But... Nobody has the time for that. Even if they're well... only ten minutes long each. Yeah, it just yeah. it just feels overwhelming to just click on the next one every so often. That's around the views I get. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, he does put out again so many videos. So like, I suppose all the vi- the views add up to some degree. But like, I'm looking at his videos from like a while ago. They get like 500 views a piece. So even if you upload 30 views or 30 videos of this thing, if they each get around 500 videos or 500 views, that's a total of 15,000 views in one day. And that's not terrible i guess but for a guy who's trying to make it his sole living i mean that's not that's not sustainable i mean you know what i'm not here to critique his business model really i'm just here to point out I, that he is a man of legend you know and i wish him well i hope he keeps it up <laughs> is I, that what I, this I, is I wanna... about about wishing him well <laughs> um well uh, sort of <laughs> i don't hate the guy i don't I, hate the guy i, I, I want to I... talk about uh like mm-hmm. the whole like cutting episodes up into 10 minute chunks I have. Sure. Okay. I used to do let's plays, and mm-hmm. 
part of the fun, for some reason, was like having my big recording and then splitting it up into ten minute chunks, mm. and 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 like uploading like ten and like spreading them out to to release scheduled over like uh, one per day. And I I don't know. Mm. It's just that that was a cool thing. But like th- those videos, if you ever look at my let's plays on Gibbon Gaming. The very first ones are like I'm the meekest you could ever imagine, uh, <laughs> even meeker than than currently. And it's like over the mm-hmm. course of the let's plays and then into streams, you you like you can see me grow into a real person. Yeah, like I, I that's sound true. like I sound like a mouse in the Rayman Two <laughs> let's plays. You, you're, you're 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 like a chia pet, only far less entertaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not even good. They're never they've never been good. I ki- I kind of like gave up. The, the, even though I liked splitting episodes up into 10 minute chunks and, mm-hmm. and seeing the uploads, like, oh yeah, look at all these uploads. Because Digi used to say, yeah, I've made like 100 videos this month and most of them are Let's Plays. I'm like, yeah, I like yeah, numbers. Yeah, no kidding. I, I like <laughs> numbers too. I like saying I, it, can make, I can upload a bunch of videos, but it, 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 nobody cared. And, and yeah, it's the a bunch live of streams, The live streams are so much less editing intensive, so much more fun. And mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. there are some incredible moments in those, like hi- the hi- Minecraft times with with Munchie here. That's right. Hi- 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 and me, I was there. <laughs> if, oh, if, if there's if there's anything that I can say, video games have impacted my life in such a way. It would be that now, unequivocally, because of video games, I love seeing numbers go up. That's what I live for. When I wake <laughs> yeah. up, I, I yeah. I'm like, what yeah. if I see a six turn into an eight today? I would lose my <laughs> fucking mind. I, I am, love I am, seeing numbers go you, up. You, you guys know very well that I have grown into watching analytics and compiling spreadsheets as in a fe- fetishistic style fixation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, it's great and I love it. And I definitely think video games, like I, I think of it as a video game mm-hmm. in the way that like my stats are rising. I'm, I'm going to unlock the ultimate weapon at some point. Nate, Nate is totally stoked this month to, to play uh, Taxes 20, 2018. It's going to be a I great time. I have been prepping. I've been I've been grinding out my skills, preparing all my documentation. For the I've been ba- basically, I've been basically specking into taxation mode yes. for the last like six <laughs> months or so. And uh, it's Beautiful. time to reap my rewards. <laughs> I I, um, I I want to comment. Mm-hmm. This, this is kind of like a weird tangent, but I think it's interesting. Okay, uh, Nate. So so like Dark Side Phil is like one of like like one of the the, the founding fathers of the of the Let's Play ethnosphere, right? Without question, without yeah. question, yes. And mm-hmm. but but he, but he's averaging like shit views. That's uh, true. This just reminds me, like like a month or so ago, uh, I, I I was just you know searching for homesick music because that's just the kind of guy I am, and I found mm-hmm. a video called "Doctor Explained" by George Bunziaki, and and uh, mm. uh, you know I'll link in the comments or something, and yeah. it's 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 the guy who made "Doctor" like the Homestuck track "Doctor" the John's Lane. Oh, do, do, okay. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. uh, and it and it has like. 5,000 views. He has, like, less than 300 subscribers. And just when you think, like, the guy who made Doctor, like, like probably the most popular, like, well-received favorite of the Homes, like, entire, like, OTST uh, mm-hmm. Doctor, like, is a fucking nobody, like, he's dead in a ditch in fucking Africa now. No one yeah. remembers him. Like, no one gives a single <laughs> shit about this guy, even though he made, like, the most successful fucking track in Homestuck. See, that, that's the thing right there. And it's mm-hmm. the fact, it, it, it strikes me as a little bit unjust like it, it's not oh, it's obviously so like illegal or anything yeah. but it's it's so weird to me that all these people are honestly like significantly successful have their little communities God, i should call that on... guy i should get that yeah. guy to work for me yeah. <laughs> that yeah good I, I, he on maybe he would you know i mean obviously he's got skills but like these guys who just like for example with dark side phil he gets pretty shit views but people just you know, like mock him and take his content and like retool it in a mocking way and get just so many more views than he gets and obviously more ad revenue and everything that comes with it. And like, that's fine. That's not criminal. It is, it is relatively transformative. It just strikes me as like, I wish Dark Side Phil was in some way capitalizing on this too because mm-hmm. he's just languishing and just, it, it sound, it's seeing, it's my, you know, my, my, my faint hints of socialism buried deep down in my <laughs> psyche make me think, God damn it, I wish. Wish he was getting a share of this too. Uh, hashtag bash the fash. Mm-hmm. I wanted to yeah. mention earlier I, that like mm-hmm. going from let's plays to live streams is what I did, mm-hmm. and and a lot of other people have done that. Some successfully, some not. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favorite, who is not. Oh, I know, I know really what you're going to say. Yeah. yeah, it was Germa and Ooh. and Star. Two and you can like, maybe bring TF2 up uh, Demolition YouTubers. D a little bit. He's a little different, but still. 
did yeah, switch they, to do Instagram. Well, what they did was they used mm-hmm. to make videos about, um, you know, they, they played a game and then they would heavily edit it. So it's like, right, right. it's a let's play, but without the, the boring parts. And, and it was really funny and they were really mm-hmm. funny. And they would often collab with each other. And both of them have... Uh, migrated over to Twitch, which is much but in more very for different them. ways. In in yeah. very very different ways, and, it, mm. and it's clear that that Star is shit now. He sucks. Yeah. He's, he's real he's bad. Got, like he's got really cool. Um, a new cool he, like intro graphic. He, he's way more successful. Like like okay okay like he 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 sucks. Like I would never watch a Star stream. That would be poison. But like he he he's way more successful. Like, he he's a like, okay okay. Well, just to explain. Uh, Star and Germ were both like Team Fortress two players who basically did almost exclusively t- Team Fortress two content. And then mm. Overwatch came out, and and and, and Germa just kind of you know stopped doing TF two, but not like you know got into Overwatch a little bit. But that wasn't just his main thing. But Star mm. got super into Overwatch, and now he's like a like a serious. Overwatch streamer, commentator guy, and he goes like Overwatch events, and he's like a real esports boy, and uh, does that whole scene, and it's just dreadful. It's just the most boring <laughs> shit in he's the entire become, world. Like he was never that funny, but it was sort of like the understated, like yeah, I'm just playing a game, and he does something really cool. And it's like yeah, yeah, you're dead, you know, whatever. But now he's like screaming. He's screaming constantly in his Overwatch let's yeah. plays. Uh, Is that Overwatch good or bad? Streams. It sounds bad. It, the screaming is he's not good at it and he's I would also never, like constant. screams are never funny so these guys are like bros though right are they like a team well i mean um, they're well, the they friends. were bros they 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 okay. i don't know what what their situation is but they haven't like collabed or, or done anything together in a long time i think it's kind I of i just noticed they have a channel called stir slash germa stream archive i, I know, don't know that's, if it's that's a, that's uh, someone else like a third okay. party just uh, uploads them germa mm. has has ch- has um yeah. Changed he's not from, doing TF2 from anymore Ger- either. Yeah, yeah. But you, you Germa t- is, is well, streaming and he's doing like any game, like any game that could be funny, and he just makes mm-hmm. it like uh, he he tries really hard to make like funny comedy videos, mm-hmm. and he's really good. And he's my favorite boy. We well, you know this is a very interesting topic. The idea of maybe there's like a cultural shift happening now from let's plays to streaming. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm certainly I, I'm streaming. It's, it's way now. more profitable, dude. Stream, yeah, I mean, you got, you got your super chats, you got your yeah, stream yeah. labs, you got your Twitch, you know, money stuff, and obviously that's going to drive people to do it. Like, I've been thinking about, I, I've really only tried on YouTube so far, but at, at some point I'll probably try switch out and, uh, or Twitch out and, like, the stream lab stuff and whatnot. But, like, what I'm, what I'm thinking about is just, like, I had been doubting myself. Like, for a long time, again, we'd all doubted, like, Let's Plays. And, again, I don't think they're obviously, like, going to... T- stand the test of time as well as I don't know. For example, a plinket review. I, I want to like get into example. that later, but, but no need to get into that. that. But like the other day, I saw something that really rocked my fucking world, and it was it was just like a snippet of. Um, are you guys familiar with Doctor Disrespect? You know no. that guy. I'm not. Uh, so he, he's like an extremely popular YouTuber, a uh, 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 Twitch streamer who recently had just gotten into. He had like a little scandal or whatever. I don't care. Um, but like he he had I think this is as he after he had come back and I just saw someone had uploaded a, a thing and and here's what happened he's just like he was like hanging out and like someone donated like five grand or something all at once he's like wow holy shit and so he's just you know he's like playing a game and he's he, you know he's got the face cam on him obviously he's green screened a little bit and he's like wow uh, holy shit hang on guys we just got like a big donation hold up and so he presses a button. Like on his thing, and like the the visual changes, and the visual is now we're looking at like a big like night sky skyscraper field with like t- like there's a big building with like Twitch HQ like on the top of the building, and I had never seen this before because I haven't actually watched any of his actual streams, mm-hmm. and it's it, we're all of a sudden like on his stream we're now looking at a big image of like this this night line skyscape or whatever, and we mm-hmm. see Twitch HQ in the distance. All of a sudden, like on the bottom left of the screen. Onto this, like, animation, Dr. Disrespect himself walks out into the animation. So, and then he points up at Twitch HQ and he's like, there it is, guys. Twitch HQ. I'm taking it for my own today. Or, like, some, and I'm like, what? is happening how is he doing this and so so clearly like at home he's got like a setup going on where he's got like a green screen somewhere and he can press a button to like switch the viewer to like go to that and he's got it set up so that he can like suddenly be in this cityscape like looking up at twitch hq with like his green screen and like camera set up at like any time he wants to he's got this ready to go so he can just like he can be in like this weird cyberpunk twitch future <laughs> looking up at the fucking twitch hq i was like this is the most creative use of streaming i've ever seen in my entire goddamn life and i'm starting to get why this might be where 
things are going in the future. That, that sounds like, indescribable. That's it's, not, it's, it was so I was compl- I was rocked to my core. I could not believe <laughs> someone had done this, but it was like the coolest thing I've ever seen. By far the coolest thing I've ever seen anyone do on Twitch or like mm-hmm. while streaming. It was nuts. Like I, he must I, have had another camera, a green screen setup, to everything please ready to go. He must do this all the time. Mm-hmm. But just unbelievable, incredible. I loved it. Mm-hmm. That's sort of yeah. like like real broadcasting. Sort of, you, you must yeah. have a team of people setting that up so that you could click, clackily clack, and change camera, everything. I mean, I was I, I was just thinking to myself like how I could do it. And XSplit, which is what I use, has like a function where you can just like basically click to switch like views, and it automatically does just like changes the yeah. inputs. Yeah, OBS. And has if that you too. set everything up, yeah. you can have it at like the push of a button if you set up everything ahead of time to just like have that ready to go while you're streaming. But still, like to put that whole production together is like. Even like, the damn. idea, the idea, of just like I'm. This is what I'm going to set up. This is what I'm going to do. Like that's like just, just this guy just is like he made this animation or something. He's just like I'm just going to go now, stand for a while, look up at this fictional Twitch HQ that I've invented in my own little narrative on my stream. Like holy shit, that's like the best idea I've ever heard. Just um, I mean, if he gets awesome. like a regular huge donations of like five grand, then I guess yeah, he, it's easy to pay for Twitch. that. They call him, yeah, he's doing very, very well. But, like, the, any of us could do this, too, if we just had, like, a second camera running and a green screen. And uh, all you do is, like, put the image up or something. F- 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 first video first video of, 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 of RadCon 3 uh, checking the Kickstarter. Wow, guys, we got a big donation coming. Like, like cuts cuts to uh, <laughs> you know, a, a recording of us. There it is, guys, PCP HQ. We're going to take it okay. for ourselves. All <laughs> I'm saying is if we have PCP HQ and we have, like, a live stream room or some sort of, like, talking room, we could definitely set something like this up. Mm-hmm. And I very much want to. I'm down that for trying. Incredible. I, would, I would love that. I, I, I'm actually unreal. super into streaming. I love streaming. I think it's really nice. I used to stream a lot, but I but I've fallen off the wagon now. But I but I really like it. I I think it's the way of the fucking future. I, I'm curious though, uh, Mr. Tavern. What do you think of streaming? Do you see it as possibly the way the future is going, or do you think it's going to be equal or just kind of parallel to to let's playing stuff? Or what are your thoughts on the matter? Well, uh, I have no idea really. Um, mm-hmm. I've never been much for uh, the wave of the future kind of thing. If you know what I mean. <laughs> You know, sure, fair enough. I usually enough. review old games and play older games. Mm-hmm. But on a personal level, it's really hard for me uh, to watch streams because they usually happen at very specific times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And sure. I prefer YouTube videos because I can just watch them, you know, whenever I want. I do like That's that. That's kind of the main uh, advantage, isn't it? That's, That's probably one of the reasons why I've never yeah. gotten into watching streams. I, I do stream mm-hmm. sometimes and I like I like doing them a lot. Um, but mm-hmm. watch I've never gotten into watching them. Uh, yeah, I guess it, it it's it's fun to stream just because it's the, there's no like extra editing work you have to do. You just do it and once it's done, it's up. Yeah, somewhere. That, that's great. It's a very relieving and feeling to just know you're done at the it's, end. It's a different feeling from making a product because it, it's because the whole thing with Let's Plays is that um, if it's a personality-driven Let's Play, you're basically mm-hmm. hanging out with the people on the Let's Play. Exactly. That's the and, real And a stream is just, like, more yeah. directly um, adding to that so that you can chat to the person I, in, in real time. The, the the reason I like streaming is, is also one of the reasons I don't like streaming. It, it's it's mm. a two-headed thing. It's, it's, a, it's a hydra. I like the fact that I get instant input... And a, 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 you know satisfaction for, for, mm-hmm. for my trials and tribulations within the virtual world, but then I also feel like it's kind of sometimes too fan oriented, where it just can yeah. get like like especially if you're watching stream archives and there is no like and the streamer hasn't put up like a you know a visual of the chat, he'll just be right, responding right. to things in chat and you'll have no idea what the fuck is going on. So it's it's super you know, archaic and hard to get into from an archives, uh, you know, point of view. But I guess that's not the way streams are meant to be I, I'm played. wondering if, like, maybe it makes the most sense. Like, I was thinking, like, exactly that. Like, how, like, the, if the point of, of streaming is to get the engagement, like, from an audience perspective, you get to feel like you're part of the action as it's going on, which a lot yeah. of, I think, especially a lot of kids will really enjoy, because kids have no sense of self and they want to attach themselves to, like, a powerful figure in their eyes, et cetera, et cetera. But, like, um... Maybe like so, so stream archives are fun and all, but you you totally lose that sense. Exactly. Well, Which is why maybe stream highlights are the are the thing to Twitch, go for. Twitch has, that's stuff. what Jerma does. Yeah, Twitch yeah. Has, so good. Um, Twitch kind of, I, I don't want to say found a solution, but like when you mm. watch, if you watch, if you archive uh, something on Twitch, 
yeah. you go back and you rewatch it, it archives the chat as well. So as that you watch, feature is amazing. Yeah. That's so good. So That's you, so good. Your archives on Twitch, the chat will go in real time with the the replay. <laughs> Uh, that is why, unfortunately, all my racist slurs I post in the Twitch chats <laughs> every day, I will forevermore be seen by everyone watching. Well, Let's I, play. I was it. gonna, I was gonna be, I guess, the sole contrarian. Just be like, I hate mm. live streaming. I hate really? doing it a lot. Yeah, because, um, I don't know. I just, I feel really stressed out when I do it. I think the reason is that, like, I either live stream me doing artwork or I live stream mm. playing video games. And the reason I do yeah. work is to get work done, and I want to stay focused. And when I'm sure. And I have to, like, not be focused. i got to keep tabs on the chat and stuff and make sure I'm not just... Because if I'm just sitting there doing mm-hmm. work, I must well just do work. Like, why mm-hmm. but Tom, split my but time? Tom, I, well, I'm, I'm curious. Haven't you... I mean, we've been talking about the idea of possibly streaming uh, the PCP recordings. Haven't you been kind of uh, advocating for that? Is that a different situation? Yes, I think that is different. And the reason mm-hmm. I'm... Got, the Because re, the reason I hate streaming solo is because if mm-hmm. I'm doing work, I want to stay focused. And... Sure dealing with the chat is just like i'm not good at multitasking so i'll just there'll be mm-hmm. like half an hour blocks of me just sitting there working and then i'll check the chat and I'm like oh hey and then like half the people aren't talking anymore because no one's paying attention and then when i stream <laughs> okay. when i stream playing video games i play video games to relax and so mm-hmm. i mm-hmm. can't relax because i have to like try and keep a persona up and be entertaining yeah so both hard. scenarios suck uh but <laughs> streaming the pcp would be fine because i'm just talking and that's true. That's true. You know, like we'd all be able to keep tabs in the chat if we had a chat going. So it wouldn't be my sole responsibility. Like there's been huge lulls in the conversation for me while you guys mm-hmm. are going off about dark side folks. I don't know shit about him. I could be in the chat right. just fucking mm-hmm. bombing shit out or whatever. So like I feel like <laughs> that would make more sense just for my comfort in terms of like being able to do it. But when I just stream mm-hmm. solo, I hate it. Like I'm trying to get better because like I think there is going to be a big market for that. And I think a lot of people yeah. are into mm-hmm. it. But I just, I'm not naturally attuned to that medium at all. And it's just an uphill battle for me. Okay, I, I, I like, I, I genuinely like the fact that I have a small stream audience that I get, I, I get like maybe 20 viewers, like, like, you know, after it goes on for a long time, like 10 people. Like, that, you know, that, that because... statement, Munchie, is like the equivalent of that old line Ben used to say about how he loved average looking girls. He liked, he liked normal looking girls. You know, I don't want those tens. I don't want those what? actually attractive fucking girls um, around. I, to me, I just want you to really say moron. that. You'll go <laughs> king of five. That's not ben. the Good same old. at I'm all. Just, I mean, give me everything. <laughs> Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Everybody knows about like you know the like the blonde tan look is not for everybody. You know the the, the classic ten out of ten is not for everybody. Ben likes attainable girls. Everybody. <laughs> That's not even true. And if I said that one time, it was Nate, ironic. Nate, 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 sure. The, 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 the reason I like it is uh-huh. because then I can just play the game, and the chat is not always going. I don't have to always look at my phone and you know see uh, the chat okay, open fair. and respond right, to it. Right. it. It can be a slow you know drip of. of fan interaction so i can pace myself i can respond to the game it, it's like a let's play but just occasionally I, I can have fan input and, and, and this yeah, okay. is this, this, uh, this second thing i'm about to say here goes into my weird two-headed uh double think about about streaming is whenever i like put a joke in a twitch chat and the streamer is like haha like i see that like 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 very funny m- munchy w tiny hats i'm like uh-huh. i've been validated my life is worth living I, I can go to sleep a happy man if i were to if i were to die Die today. I I, I, would, I would die a fulfilled, uh, hap, happy life. But yeah. then when when I'm in a chat and I'm, or I'm in a stream archive, I'm just like watching. And then like like I, I see I see the fucking face cam. I see the streamer with his dopey fucking uh, expression look and like lean forward at the monitor, like like looking and like reading chat. And I and I, I see him go. <laughs> that that's a funny one, Ex- Excalibur two thousand and seven. I I I, get, I fly into I fly into an uncontrollable rage that this fan interaction is getting in, in in the place of my of my timeless media. It's getting the place of, of my timeless content, and, and it's ruining the fucking experience. And I and I fly off the handle, and I cannot accept it as valid artistically. I fucking I I I, I hate yeah, it when it's not I, happening to me. I I definitely feel like there's a place for both. Um, like, let's plays as, like, rewatchable things that aren't, like, in the moment stuff, Mm -hmm. and then also streams. I feel like you can do, you can be a streamer who also does let's plays. I don't know if anyone actually does that. But, like, I mean, the the Spoonie experiment let's plays, where he's just, he he does, like, Phantasmagoria and, um, uh, this, this Ripper game. They're, like, old, uh, Windows PC uh, point-and-click games with, like, uh, full-motion video sequences. And he 
he riffs on the game. He's just he's playing it, and he's occasionally he explains something to the audience. But most of the time, he's just you know doing like that guy with the glasses reactions to things. But he's not like mm-hmm. on camera or anything. It's just like a let's play show of you know him playing through the game and reacting to things as they come. And you know it's kind of like a hybrid of like it, it recorded at the time and also scripted stuff. And the scripted stuff, the aspect of that that's like scripted. And cutting out like really boring parts is what makes it so rewatchable. I think I've rewatched him play Phantasmagoria two like eight mm. times, and it's like a six hour let's play. <laughs> like they're well, just damn. like it. They're, they're so so rewatchable. So like I tried to rewatch Digi Bros, but because because it's all about like stuff that's currently happening to Digi and Victor, it's hard to like get into it again because I it's so long in the past and it's not even that particularly yeah. interesting. You can just it's jump just in sort of anywhere in an episode. You you have to you have yeah. to like, start from the beginning of each series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's like it, the 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 things like the what Gamers Tavern does and uh what was the guy you recommended? Dark Side Phil? No, no. Uh, what <laughs> oh, Gamers oh, Tavern. The one he recommended. It? Retsu Prey? Yeah, Retsu Prey. Uh, is, that, is that what you're referring to, Hippo? No, no, the the other one. They Are said you talking who, about who I recommended? Yeah. Uh, Karma Jolt. That's uh, the one. That's like, like, I'm gonna that's I'm right. gonna look at him because like I, I feel like if if they're anything like yours, they're but gonna look be at like, his early uh, early stuff. Mm. Yeah, mm. They're, they're gonna be like things that you can just rewatch and put on at any time to just like ah oh, man, remember this? Like you, you, I could come back like ten years later and watch a gamers tab and let's play because they're just that's like funny true. things. They, they are they are basically sp- timeless. They are time. basically timeless. When, when you just filed for your second mortgage and your wife has left you and, and you're stuck <laughs> with two rod and kids who don't. <laughs> respect you or love you in any way you, you can look back on the old times and, you, and just play a playlist of gamers tavern videos while, while you put the fucking pistol in your mouth ready ready to meet your fucking maker <laughs> uh uh uh, uh oh Too looking a little true. cloudy outside gets hit by cloudy with a chance of pain balls <laughs> got him <laughs> classic gamers tavern quotes <laughs> your, your, your fucking gray matter I just splatters made over yep. your decals <laughs> incredible um well, hell, guys, we've got quite a journey here. Maybe are we done here? Should we should we get to the questions at this point? I'm feeling pretty I, pretty good. Um, uh, what about me? I, what about me and my legendary yeah, yeah, let's yeah, play? Uh, Maybe I'm uh, gone. Uh, such Is nobody as, oh, going course, to bring Nuzlocks. up the elephant in the room? Oh, of course, the Nuzlocks. The, you know, I wasn't the, even thinking the, of them as let's the plays, fancy perhaps. in the room. I was thinking of this like more uh, like Nuzlocks to me are like a subcategory of Let's Plays, I suppose, that are just infinitely better in every way. Well, yeah, um, the, the, the Ben Saint Nuzlocks yeah. are of that sort of same like rewatchable quality. Although I have not gone and rewatched them, I probably should. I I just I just well, since we're on the subject, I want to mm, say about mm. that whole thing that I was really going for i was really going to like take the uh, an extemporaneous improvised format like a let's play mm. and turn it into not a scripted but turn it into like a narrative of course experience. not experience and you can't uh, you can't discredit your own statements from earlier it can't be scripted uh well right. yeah yeah no it was totally unscripted <laughs> it was totally it was totally raw it was totally raw well, and I therefore mean, artistically ben valid. put like the basic yes. plot points in order like he's you know a weird oh, dictator murdering pokemon I, and whatnot you d- know d- like that d- was all delete from the watch later right now um well that, <laughs> that all that came up that came up kind of kind of off the cuff like i wasn't planning yeah. that when i started it Right, with your first one, that's true. That's true. Yeah. More for the second one. That was, but um, yeah, like that was all kind of. And it was just like, oh, naturally. anything that comes up, anything that gets brought up as like a joke, will continue to be relevant and will will become mm. lore. You know, was yeah. the goal there? Mm-hmm. And, and um, worked. Yeah, worked. yeah, you're right. It's it, I don't know if I would even really call it a let's play. I mean, it is, but it's really its own animal. It's really just its own beast. You know, it's something greater. It's something greater than anything. <laughs> it, it, it's it's really let's play. It, it's 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 more artistic than, than your commonplace <laughs> peasant let's play. The, the, the big saint let's play is it, it, truly you know a breed its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would certainly recommend Ben's Nuzlocke if you have the slightest interest in Pokemon or Nuzlocke. Has, I was well, ben, uh, a genocide is better than conquest. Um. Oh yeah. Which one do you like more? Uh, yeah, it's tough. I would probably have to go with Genocide. Mm-hmm. Um, but they both got their they both got their their charms. They've both got which is their the one with strength. bananas? Which is the one with bananas? That's Genocide. 
then genocide's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bananas <laughs> is a pretty legendary moment. <laughs> also, which is the one with uh, uh, the Raticate, uh, Whip Stitch? That is also, that, yeah, that's also genocide. Yep, genocide that, that, wins. Uh, whenever genocide we wins. bring him up, I have, I have to mention how I famously ripped off Whip Stitch with a Lolan Raticate and named him Witch, Whip Stash and used <laughs> Ben's own tactic against him. I have to bring that up every single time because I'm did, so Did you beat Ben pr- using that? Yeah, I did. I'm so <laughs> proud of myself. I, I that. That's what I think uh, about when I go to sleep. I, yeah. I, I soothe the pain and, and all the all the dead souls looming in my ear by just thinking about how how I pulled that off expertly. Fantastic, <laughs> well done. I, Congratulations. That well, did, that did happen. It was canon. Uh, former Vice President Joe Biden did do all of the things Munchie just described. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. I. Uh, I, I I actually want to extend this a little bit here, Nate, if that's all right. Uh, you feel Ben free. brushed up upon something that I that I would like to mention. Uh, how the, I, I, not 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 he, he did not actually mean this. Uh, I, it was me it was me saying this, but uh, how some like like the let the let's plays that are two dudes talking and the let's plays that are you know two or you know people talking about the game. There's various types of let's plays of varying quality, and and I would like to get to the hard matter here. Are let's plays like like good are 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 they good <laughs> does just playing a game and commenting it constitute being good content and, and, and you know it, it, it's it's a fuzzy area but it's it's lofty and retarded but uh well like to talk about yeah it. i i, I yeah. think like the two different types of let's plays personality or like a presentation or mm. like a show like an edited show uh it just depends on a like if it's a personality thing that you don't do it too much I guess. Well, mm-hmm. actually, no. That's not really the question. The question is, are they good in yeah. general? They yeah. can I think, be good. Are, are, are they I think, art? Are they art? Are, well, are we using art. the super narrow definition of art? No. Or what I think like, it is is that big one? my my mm-hmm. opinion uh, is that let's plays playing a video game in and of itself is not art. Uh, there's nothing artistic about it, and if you're making a Let's Play just because you're like, I want to play video games and get paid for it, that's the dream, you're going about it wrong. A, well, a Let's Play is a foundation on which, which to build art on top of. Playing the game has to facilitate some sort of creativity or some sort of well, you know, entertainment I, value, whether I, it's I, presentation I, I, I or personality. or it's a, it's, a, it's a platform to showcase something beyond just playing the game itself. I, I feel like I, I, this I, I, is sort of wrapped up in the fair use question where it's kind of unclear whether or not uh, like a Let's Play is a transformative work, legally speaking. Um, but like just well, as like, we, yeah. I think there's things that like long plays are probably the least um, art. Yeah. Which yeah. is just showing, especially the game when there's no commentary. No commentary. Yeah. I, 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 um, I love watching long plays. So I don't have to actually play the game. But yeah, yeah, that's what they do. Um, but they but do. there's other things that don't really require a personality mm-hmm. or like um, an edited show, which is speedruns. Mm-hmm. Which I love is speedruns. So is much. basically like it's the same as a long play. It's just uh, less long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a way, in a way, that's true. Um, um uh, there, there's uh, a w- lot going on in a in a speedrun. But uh, Ben, go ahead. W- go ahead. W- when I. Uh, speed speed runs are really great when it's a game that you know really well you know because like like these people are they're showcasing their mastery of the game and really breaking the mechanics to like optimize you know completion time and whatnot which is in of itself sort of you know like changing the game i mean it's not actually changing it's all within the parameters what the game allows but it's i think i think it's a documentations things like speedruns are like like just a document they're kind of like a technical manual then, of a thing I and guess. then if somebody makes if somebody makes a documentary about people speedrunning then it's uh but before well, that it's just like here's like footage of me trying in my best is a here's a question is a comedy routine art that like a comedian does on stage is that art or does it become art if you film it are either of those art both is uh, art uh, clearly it's art okay, apparently. Both, both, yeah. both are art okay so we can all agree at the very least that what gamers tavern does for sure is sure. art absolutely oh, yes w- w- when i say art i know that obviously well, thank it, you very much <laughs> it's it's a vague <laughs> term but I, but I, but I, what i mean is does it hold the same like culture like culture per turn output or like 
societal, mm-hmm. you know, pressure. Like, like the, like the, you know, the holy titans, like three D anime or like two well, like, he, he, Here's a good example, though. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Eagle Raptor did, of course, his famous sequelitis on Mega Man X, but mm-hmm. then he also did a long solo let's play. At least I think he most, either completely or mostly finished Mega Man X. Is one of those art and the other isn't? If so, why? Because they basically do the same thing. Wait, I think so I don't, I've never seen the second both. video you're talking about, so I... Yeah. It was a single a Let's Play on Game Grumps, where, yeah. where Dan was sick or, or away or something. Was I, He um, was just talking about the game? Yeah. He was playing it and talking about it. I mean, I you've got to just ask the question, is somebody talking... It, it, that's exactly art. what I was about to say. It, it, are, 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 are two people playing a game commenting uh, constitute art? Well, do, are, are six people talking about Let's Plays art? Is is this well, art Well, see, that's right the now? thing. That's the thing. No. We, ha- we have to completely put aside the qu- the question of quality. Quality is completely irrelevant right. to whether or not if it's art or not. quality is irrelevant, I would say that, yes, it is art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a I, sort yeah, of I, performance art. Because, yeah, it's it's Indeed. kind of performance. It's the- It's recorded. It could be edited, you know. I it, guess it, it, it depends on the, the 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 presentation or like the intention. I guess because like I wouldn't say like if you go to college, you sit down in a big fucking auditorium and like someone presents mm-hmm. you biology. I wouldn't call that that presentation art. Um, but what if, if the, what if the man makes a single joke within the context of this lecture? Does then it the, then, then the joke art? the joke is art? The, but not the whole thing, just the joke. I don't think so. I just so. think that that's, uh, hmm. this whole th- idea of it's silly. It, like it, if it's well, if it's sure. if it's a recorded I mean, product this is put like, somewhere for people to uh, if it's made for an audience. The definition of art to is like really un, think, undoable and like mm-hmm. at the end of the day rather it, irrelevant. It, um, it, it, it's it's all gray. Like it, it's an unspoken truth that we all have like fuzzy artwork legitimacy hierarchies oh you for know, sure like like su- like uh, yeah sub- like subtlety like like each you know it'll change for each genre or medium which we consider more art regardless of how like retarded that is or how conceited that is like like how how i famously set fire to the um the the petrol black oil doused wooden altar of porn and books uh uh and their, <laughs> their artistic credibility yeah. i ruined literature and porn forever and no one could view them as anything that have uh you know our artistic quality to them uh, well, but at the end of the day like all art is art and like there's nothing but pretension in Green, but but we all do it. We well, all you, do you're it. asking you're asking for an authority here, and luckily for you, I have the authority right here. Its name is UrbanDictionary.com, Urban yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we've got the definition of art. Allow me to provide it to you, so we can settle this debate for all time. Here we go. Art. Art is used as the shorter version of the commish, common British greeting "all right." It means that you oh. are okay with something and accept. Jim, want to go to Walmart? Quinn, hell yeah. Jim, I'll pick you up in ten. Quinn, art. The end. That's is it. that wow. true? No. If so, we're going it. to have we to have saw you apart. No, no. All right. This is you. that's wrong. That's it's incorrect. It's it's right. You, <laughs> you, 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 we do, we don't say the a bit. We don't. We just say right. Or, you know, that, that, that's right. how we say all right over here. Okay. Fair enough. So you can't make that. Well, now we know. Now we've come to the end of the podcast, and now we know how they say "all right" in the UK. (laughs) All right, well, Well, exactly. That was we really achieved our goal here. I just want to. I just want to say one thing. Uh huh. Uh, If if say Munchie was not any internet guy, and I just I just I I saw him on the street, and he was saying a speech. He was just talking funny, and I was like, (laughs) "If if I was just doing armor table alone, behind 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 just walking walking down the street." Walking down the streets doing an arm retrieval, and I was like, "Huh, that's that's a funny talk guy. I like that wordsmith right there." Mm-hmm. Would that would me watching him I, or listening to him just in person as a human being would that be considered I, art? Yes, I, he's, I, if I, he's here, performing. I, 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 I have something to say about this. Okay, okay, okay. Imagine you're in a quirky, comedic, or otherwise interesting scenario, like 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 Hippo <laughs> just mentioned, uh, yeah. rating explicit. Uh, 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 like it doesn't matter what. You just you know, you're, you're something in your life is unfolding in an entertaining and provoking way, and mm-hmm. and and, you, and and it's something that you would you know present to others to, to the unwashed masses. First of all, is the experience of this scenario are inherent? <laughs> Uh, or and secondly, what would be this is what this is what I want to what would be more artistic you telling your story to someone or you recording the scenario? Let, let me break here. Okay, here's definition two is the answer to this question. I think this is actually a very good definition from Urban Dictionary on what art is. 
Once when asked, or art, uh, once when asked what Trans-Siberian Orchestra was about, Paul O'Neill replied, it's about creating great art. When asked to define what great art was, Paul said, the purpose of art is to create an emotional response in the person that is exposed to that art. And there are three categories of art, bad art, good art, and great art. Bad art will elicit no emotional response in the person that is exposed to it. Uh, good art will make you feel an emotion as you have felt before. You see, blah, blah, blah. And great art will make you feel an emotion that you have never felt before, et cetera, et cetera. That's the rest. Uh, I think that's, a, I like his first statement before delineating between them. If you feel an emotion, that's it. You're, yeah. You're, it's, it's art. And, and I mean, this podcast and any and all Let's Plays, by that they definition, do, that. Are, do qualify. So, so, exactly. so, so if, I, if I touch a burning stove and I go, ouch, does that mean that's art? That experience was art. The experience is art. The, 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 I guess. I, well, your decision, always, your decision always, to touch the the, the stove was the, the there's art. There's always going to be the, arbitrary the, lines. I, I know it, the, but yeah. there has to be like there's some or, gatekeeper. The the, re- the reason it's so um, like everybody always <laughs> argues about what art is and like the parameters of, of what you can define as art mm. and like oh but what about this and then everyone's like oh fuck what about <laughs> that? and yeah, it's like the, yeah. the reason is is that. <laughs> Art is, if it like applies in that way, which I probably would agree with, mm-hmm. it becomes mostly useless, and you just have to use it colloquially. Like if you see a painting, yeah. people generally accept it, that a painting is art. You see it on the wall, and you're like, yeah, that's a good piece of art. And even if something else would qualify, most people like like somebody just talking on the street, really in a funny accent. You're like, whoa, that's cool. I feel <laughs> an emotion. Uh, nobody would say that's yeah. art. They just say, "I saw this real cool guy today," and uh, and that's what they G- would say. Gib is right. Gib is right. Ethnic minorities are art for sure. Uh, for uh, sure. Uh, I I would say that art needs to be created. So so this means in, in your scenario, if I had written a script for arm retrieval and then was reciting that script while banging trash cans and pushing over homeless people uh, <laughs> walking down the street, then, then then that would be art. But if it was I, well, that, that would rule out improv, I guess. I don't know. It, well, it, yeah, do it's, it ne- it's never going to be something that anyone can define. Mm-hmm. But I think we exce- all get except the gist, for what the, 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 the wider consciousness of the world of people generally think of as art is like media and, and things yeah. that are like things that we like, yeah, that's art. Even if other things qualify, we'll just say, here's a cool thing. I, oh, we'll okay, say, okay, okay. It's, here's a cool art. I, 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 I think I have it. There, it has to be a creation for an audience. So, so if I were to, like, touch a stove and get my hand burned, that would not be art. But if I was like, hey, uh, check out this, Watch dude. me touch this stove. Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. Watch me touch the stove. And I was like, ow. And, and then I did, a, a, like, like a cartoonish, like, suck my, my, my dick afterward. <laughs> get that nice and wet. Okay, then but, that but would what if, art. okay. Here's a thought, though. What if, uh, like, a lightning hits a beach one day and forms, like, this beautiful, like, circle of glass somehow? Okay, let's say maybe that's not even art right then and there. But what if a guy discovers this, is like, wow, this is beautiful, comes by, like, puts a frame around it and starts selling tickets to come see this artwork, this natural artwork? At what point did it become art, if any? Uh, It's not art. It's a product at that point. No, that that is totally art in the same way that photography is art. Because you can take exactly. a picture of something that naturally exists and but it becomes art difference... because you've curated it you know you've well, because you've yeah. you've, well, you've, there's, you've, there's you've way excluded more... you've chosen what to include and exclude for for, That's true. for show he but the, he hasn't true. done that you just put a frame around something but That's uh, the point you did choose that, that 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 framing is delineating what is and isn't part of the artwork you can say if if he if 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 they put the frame in a specific way to frame like that natural formation and the background and you were only supposed to view it from this specific angle yeah. then fine but if you if you're someone who's just like hey check out this thing on the beach here's give me five dollars to look at it that wouldn't be art well he had to I choose the frame the, 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 this this comes to what I, what I was asking earlier where what is more artistic like 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 d- like telling the story of a scenario or recording the scenario because like recording is like the obvious like oh you have I don't a, think there's like, a difference. video file yeah. that, that you, there's a difference yeah. in scale no, I, I, I definitely think so I definitely think so I think that the story is more artistic because you're using words in specific ways and and telling because because you know when you're telling a story it's not going to be completely factual you're, you're going to make word you're going to use different words that will have a different meaning in other mm-hmm. in everyone's else's heads like, all, like, all... like so one word will be different for different people 
people. But if it's like a recording, it will just be like, you know, a recording. All, all I know is that this we can go back and forth on what's artistic, what isn't all I want. But this entire conversation is definitely autistic. And mm-hmm. I'm, yeah, done. I'm done. I'm done with right. it. Well, I was going to bring I'm it back around. Uh, the best say... way to solve this is... is uh... mm-hmm. Art is whatever you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. it really that's is. pretty much what it comes down to. And that's why Gamers Tavern is the best Let's Play. Is of the them European all. Union art? <laughs> De- oh, definitely, because they had to curate it. Because it was <laughs> yeah, created true. for an audience, and that audience is God. Uh, <laughs> indeed. All right, guys. I think we've hit the wall here. I think we've done all we can do. Please, God, and we us. just we just have to let the audience sort out our our science that we have witnessed before them or we've displayed our, our pedantic bullshit arguments that mean nothing but 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 nevertheless we care intensely about In, of course of course mm-hmm. well that being said everybody uh, i should have said this at the very beginning by the way but i just want to make an announcement radcon 3 arena is 100 percent funded and is 100 percent happening now mm-hmm. the five Yay. members here plus digi march 14th or so it's entering the arena Hashtag mm-hmm. enter the arena. It's happening. Get, get us up the next, next stretch goal so we can get some fucking gro- uh, GoPros and I can shoot the shit. I can fucking straight That's up Abraham Lincoln, Nate, best guy ever. <laughs> if you give me the money. Wouldn't it be John Wilkes Booth? No. Well, because, I guess not. No, I guess they're both. you will be Abraham Lincoln, you fucking bigoted fuck. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. We can, um, me and Nate yeah. can 1v1, best guy ever versus worst guy ever in the exactly. arena. The <laughs> ultimate <laughs> battle. <laughs> And remember, uh, uh, please, keep, there's a link in the description, of course, to the Kickstarter. If you would just want to give money, thanks. Well, we can always use that. Uh, again, fund the uh, stretch goal for the Enter the Arena, the Radcon 3 Arena IRL, shooting each other with guns and GoPros and whatnot. I really hope that happens. I think Real guns. We're buying to. Glocks for everyone. Indeed. It's going to be also, great. We're, we're going to have to invest in, like, double jump jet boots for everyone as well. That's going to be pretty pricey, but no. we'll, we'll see what we can do. We'll make it happen. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on Twitter. I'll let you know when I locate the quad damage and the mega health inside of the arena. I'll, I'll let you <laughs> yes. know so you can keep up. And, and also, uh, feel free to keep giving money if you want to pledge the fifty dollar thing for the uh, for the the shirts, the hundred dollar for the shout out at, during Radcon. And if you want to get that thousand dollar, if you want to be in the Royal Rumble, is there still time? There is still time, my friends. As if well as you know, twenty dollars fucking... for the for the pin, and ten dollars <laughs> at least for the behind the scenes content. That's something that people might want, you know, at any oh, time. The um, behind the scenes stuff. Wait, there is. I, w- I want to shout something out real quick, but I, okay. but I have to find it. Um, there's a comment that I want to shout out. Out on a uh, uh, on the on Kickstarter a, or where? No, on a previous video. Okay. Um, well, it, well, while you look for that, yeah, mm-hmm. Nate, w- would you like to sh- show us the 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 pity poor fuck peasant surf question from the Twitter? Indeed, I would. Yeah. Actually, I want to give a shout out to the Twitter boys because there was a couple of questions here that are actually pretty good that I'm I'm fond of. So we might do more than one pity oh question. Oh my goodness! Oh my god! And again, that's uh, on at TPCrastinators as our Twitter and using hashtag AskPCP when we record on these Saturdays. That's generally when we're going to see your questions. So keep it follow us so that you see the notification so you can send your questions in there. Uh, but here we go. From this is this is one of my favorite questions of all time. At Nurborno asks. Why do bitches have time to hit the club every night, but don't have time to attend one parent-teacher conference? Because Nate, they're too busy what? hitting you the clubs. Are because the they, because they didn't have any kids. In the world. You that should the never be allowed question I've ever seen. to uh, if, if there's any failure here, it's my delivery. Game. That question is awesome and hilarious, <laughs> and I want, I'm glad everyone I, saw it. When you, when, you, then you, when you were like, finally, we, we're going to have a good question on this show. <laughs> we, we found the one good question, and, and we found the needle in the haystack of these shitty, horrible questions. We finally no. that We've started on, on a strong foot here. I have found the best <laughs> question we've ever been asked. It's yeah. the best guy ever reading from, from, the, from the sacred text that is the Twitter. I, I was prepared. <laughs> I was pumped up. But you, but you have shoveled me shit, and I will, I will <laughs> Okay. I will rue the day you were born. All right, all right. I uh, he, he, here's one that's actually got substance to it. Again, from the from the Twitter at librplex. I think F- from, from aside Lib from R. Cuck. exactly. Yeah. Aside from the things immediately relevant to your career, what other internet slash IRL communities are you part of? That's an interesting question. I think communities. Uh, yeah, like, well, I mean, for IRL example, IRL just as one that I I'm kind of part of is like the Fitboard on 4chan. Uh, like it's in no way really relevant to like any of my content or whatever, but I sure hang out with those guys and talk about stuff and we talk about fitness and whatnot. So, uh, that, that, that's one for me. That's one for me. 
pretty my, cool, my, dude. My, pretty cool. my my answer is kind of sad because mm. my twenty are incels are yeah, incels. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. Twenty seventeen was the year of of the shrinking circle for me, where mm. I I went from you know not particularly a lot of communities, but but over the course of my involvement with the PCP, mm. my, my my soul has been sucked and my life has been drained, <laughs> and, and 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 I've I found myself becoming a part of less and less communities. Obviously, not part of the PCP, you know. It's not doing that, but it's just you know a coincidence. Yeah. Uh, for, you know, time frame reference. As as a man focuses on the things important to him in his life, it, he'll have less time to deal with the things that are less important. And yeah. you know, I think that's a natural consequence. So so you know, I I I used to frequent like you know like like V and stuff. You know, not mm. not super in depth. I used to go on Tumblr. I used to you know do a whole bunch of stuff. But now. Uh, you know, I used to be part of you know phantoms and shit. But that was you know that was that was that was way further uh, way <laughs> uh-huh. from now. Yeah, uh, I used to be in a ton of stuff, but now I I'm really only you know a part of this circle, which is you know you guys are nice and all. But, you know. <laughs> Look, are nobody's you know? forcing you to do shit, Munch. No, I'm, I'm not. This is not, not a pity that's party. That's not what I'm saying. That's okay, not what okay. I'm saying at all, Nate. That, that's we'll that's not even the point. You fucking bigoted fuck Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> okay. I'm 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 just saying. That uh, I uh, I I'm not part of any communities, and and I will make that my goal for 2018. Is that I need to be. Okay. I, I I want to get back in the groove of going on different websites and you know uh, you know hanging out with different people. I think yeah, that's, uh, that's good. I do too. I do too. I feel like I'm I'm not I'm not as active around the internet as I used to be outside of the mm-hmm. PCP, and that that kind of sucks. It's healthy. Yeah, it's, you gotta it's have good. more exp- You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta live a life to have the right to reminisce. You, you got, you gotta know more people so you can kill more people. That's my, <laughs> that's my golden rule. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I found the comment I was looking for, by the way. Oh, okay. okay. It, it, it is on the uh, the Radcon Three Kickstarter announcement. Um, mm. It's it's one of the top. It's one of the most liked comments on there. Um, and I want to encourage you: do not like this comment because Russell <laughs> posted Russell the Gengar. Posted uh. saying if his comment gets 111 likes, he'll enter the Royal Rumble and kill me. And um, oh no, <laughs> please! He's at he's at 68 likes so far, so he's more than halfway oh there. God. And if that were to happen, oh, shit, uh, I would shit we're, my pants we're, we're, on the spot. We're close. We're fucking close. So um, what do you mean we? Well, what do you mean we? Who side of you? Our guy Russell. Um, yeah. I'm just saying, guys, you have the fate. Uh, to put Russell in the Royal Rumble, it seems. If you uh, if you if you would so desire well, to see Ben vanquished I, I, by his <laughs> ghostly I mean, minions, yeah, if anyone I'm trying were to imagine to be, how to how a ghastly would that. translate onto a humanoid <laughs> WWE <laughs> custom character. Get, get, get well, those, he's, he's evolved into a Gengar now, right? He's a Gengar. He, he did eventually point. evolve into a Gengar. Oh, okay. He mm-hmm. uh, get there, those yeah. uh, get those likes up. Hashtag Let Russell wrestle. It's gonna be hashtag Let Russell wrestle. Please, everyone. It's time it's time to make it happen M- M- mr tavern what communities would you consider yourself a part of uh i, I forgot what uh, was the question about online communities or offline yeah, or, 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 or real. it, it yeah, actually said irl or online, or online. Yeah. It, there, it's all open it's all open well as far as online goes uh nothing really mm-hmm. now i used to uh post on a lot of forums in the early 2000s and uh yeah, mm-hmm. used to frequent irc chat rooms and stuff like that and I used to have a forum on my own website as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, now I'm not really part of uh, many online communities. I'm just uh, flying solo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like our hero Jason Same. Derulo. Feels, feels bad. Feels I, bad. The, only, the only community that I'm involved in that has nothing to do with my work is the gay community. I'm <laughs> the best. <laughs> uh, well, I, I wouldn't I, say I, that, Tom. I see a lot of that projected into your work, so, you know. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> got you, got, you got me there. You can't, can't, say there's you can't no completely crossover. expunge all your influences. What can <laughs> I say? G- g- gamer, I-, I I was a huge forum rat, though, though not in the early 2000s because I, I was too young. Uh, but, in, but in, like... 2010, I was I was a huge huge forum user as as I've uh, as I've talked about in my embarrassing role plays. We, we, should, have, we should have a role play episode so I can explain I can explain my various role play uh, pedigrees because because I have numerous. That's not a bad idea. It's not yeah. a bad idea. That could be a bonus well, press, episode. Pr- press I one. Mean, if you, press one if you want to hear about Munchy role plays because that question, shit is sick. The question was also about IRL communities. Yeah, yeah. If you guys Actually, uh, like do anything. Uh, sorry yeah. to in- in- interject, but uh, no problem, I just no forgot. Problem. I am actually part of one forum right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Hardcore Gaming One Hundred and One. 
Oh uh, shit, that sounds like sounds like my kind of place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds they like started, someplace uh, Dark Side Phil would hang out. Yeah, there's basically mm-hmm. just they do game reviews and they have a forum. You know, very similar to my website actually. Yeah, but I'm looking at it now. I it started first. Similar. They started in 2004. I started in 2002. Yeah, Damn. got them beat. <laughs> Show those youngsters what for. Oh, Actually, we, we haven't said the name of your website. I think it's just, a, is it GamersTavern.com? Uh, yeah, that's it. Yep, GamersTavern.com. There you go, everybody. Read the reviews. The, yeah, the longest good. running, most fantastic website review site ever. Fuck GameSpot.com. Fuck <laughs> IGN.com. <laughs> you want the yeah. fucking great you, shit? You go to <laughs> Gamers Tavern. You, you know, right. you, you know right. that you're at, at GamersTavern.com, you're not getting any of that corruption that you get, that, yeah. that journalistic corruption yeah, yeah. you get at someplace like Kotaku. You know, we're Pure free, we're journalistic free of integrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gamers <laughs> Tavern, the most ethical person known to man. The, exactly. The, he, his scruples, uh, 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 count is as high as the fucking ham, uh, you know, hammer units I we may, when, when, when I, when I uh, do a dance. He, he may deny it with his dying breath, but I suspect that Gamer's Tavern is both the alpha and omega of Gamergate. <laughs> he is the source <laughs> and the end of, of all of it. Well, I did write an article about it. Oh, what, oh, what were your thoughts? Shit. What were your thoughts? Uh, I actually didn't know anything about it. That's, <laughs> that's the point of the article. That's the best place to be. Oh, see, plausible deniability. You that's, wrote that as a cover. It's, it's I a understand. Joke. It's a joke article. <laughs> oh, okay. well, Fantastic. That's, um, I did absolutely no research for that one. That's how you know there's no <laughs> that's collusion. That's exactly how much you should do. Because he didn't even know what it was. He didn't even Dude, take talk a side. About, in, talk about journalistic integrity. Not even willing to be corrupted by the facts of the case. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what you just partial. said. Incredible. Incredible. Exactly. Be- be- beautiful. <laughs> what? Um, well, hey, uh, uh, I think there was one more question I wanted. Oh, oh. Okay, here's one final question from the Twitter. From at Reed or Daryl. And uh, this is incredible. It's, are you aware that in the same month as Radcon 3, the Muppet Babies reboot will also be released? Both will feature six members, and both will have members absent from their previous installments. And here's the question. Oh, shit. Coincidence? (laughs) (laughs) I think not. What do you you think, loyal viewer? (laughs) (laughs) We'll leave it up to your interpretation. Which which Muppet Baby are we? Mm. You're definitely animal, because you're an animal in in the sack, (laughs) as we all Oh, no. <laughs> here's, here's Wait, no, that's a, it's he's a baby. You can't say that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that has never stopped me before. That's why I make that line now. Yes. <laughs> um, it's true. The, now, now that those fucking poor people questions are out of the way, those Indeed. filthy fucking, you know, the, if only the contents the of their wallet match the contents yeah. of their brain. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, oh, and by the way, excellently said. Uh, 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 Patreon.com slash the procrastinators. Pledge as little as $1, and you're into our patron lounge, and then $5 more to get those sweet bonus episodes, which we just released, just to remind everybody, Gamergate versus the 2016 United States presidential election, the most legendary of all bonus episodes. Um, but uh, uh, so this give is us your from, money. This is from the Patreon lounge from mm. Xenograde. Do mm-hmm. you think guide slash wikis ruin the experience of playing the game? Oh. Oh, what a question. My, what a my, question. My, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. My, my my response to that is, have you played Minecraft or Terraria without having the wiki handy? Yeah. You will kill yourself. It's, it's you know, Terraria is actually interesting. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the guide. The, the guide I, is real nice. Well, that, um, that's true. But I, play, when, when, I just want to say about Terraria, since you mentioned it. I played Terraria blind the first time I did, and I actually did get a strong sense of satisfaction in, like, the very start when I played it. But when I started to look up just kind of, like, the little tasks that I should be doing, I got a lot more focus, and it really made the experience, like more the, fun the, to do um, it that way in my experience the the experience mm. of playing dwarf fortress like is yes. mostly reading the wiki mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. that's like that like is the texture of the game is the wiki because like i don't know it, it, maybe it it's possible awful. to learn it without that but if so to, that's a, there's a, there's feel a, like, a better man than i do you feel um, like games that require looking at a wiki do you feel like they're like victims of bad design like should that be necessary you know, no, I think times have changed a little bit. Like, I feel it, it, like if uh, it if it can be like an addition, like you you play a game all the way through and you're like, well, I didn't really understand some of these things, and then you look up the wiki, like like uh, I don't know, Dark Demon Blood, like all those yeah. games have the lore, and the first time you play it, you're like, I don't know what happened, but I I enjoyed myself, and then you go, you know, look at the all the 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 big old theories and stuff, yeah. and 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 the explanations of the lore, and you're like, oh, cool, now I care more. 
Like, it's like that Dark Souls, can be good. Dark Souls is good enough on its face. Uh, the one thing that's maybe a little bit worthy of criticism is like it's really hard to get your footing at the beginning of Dark Souls and like figure out where like Andre is and like how to upgrade weapons. Like that can take like a lot of hours of gameplay before you understand that's that true. stuff. That, that's the one way I would criticize it. With the lore though, that really is just like stuff to explore once you're already into the game. So I wouldn't really criticize it on that front too much. But like Ben, remember in the old days when we would like go to GameFAQs and, like, print out sheets of, like, how to do stuff in, like, Secret of Mana oh and, like, God. Mario's Mario yeah, RPG and yeah. stuff. Yeah, staple like, them together and keep them in the box life... that all our video games were. I remember that, too. Right? Th those were the old days. But, like, with, with the modern world being the way it is, I am much more forgiving of, like, games uh, sort of like Dark Souls. Or right now I'm playing Stardew Valley, and that game... Like there's, it's it's similar to like you know your dwarf fortresses, in, sort of, or like your terrarias well, and whatnot. Yeah, I, yeah, it's, I've, it's I've no played dwarf some Stardew Valley. Fortress. More like terraria, yeah. But like in that game, there's a lot that you need to either just like patiently wait to figure out. But I'm I'm way too like goal oriented to to wait for that. So I'll like look things up on the wiki. But it's so easy just to Google and go exactly where I need to go. Like to every every game is a, its own wiki now with all the information. It's so easy to like find the question, the answers to the questions I want to know. So I'm way more forgiving now, and I wouldn't really call it necessarily like bad game design with something like that because I don't want to read page after page after page of tutorial in a game when I can just super easily Google, you know, Stardew Valley wiki how to grow a certain type of fruit that I need for like the community center or whatever. I would much rather just do things at my own pace outside the game my and then Well, you know, um well so, my I mean, my Stardew Valley doesn't have any like time restrictions, right? Like like a uh, uh, Harvest Moon Not you, really. Harvest Moon you had to do everything in like in a in a very tight time frame and like to play that game like and get a good ending, you really like needed guidance. But I feel oh, like Stardew sure, Valley is designed sure. differently whereas it doesn't really matter whether you're playing optimally or not. I mean, the, the worst case scenario is that, like, you miss a window and you have to wait a whole year to, like, do it again. Like, yeah. and that's going to that's gonna be frustrating. But you will always, I think, have more time to do more um, as it keeps going. I don't think there's any kind of hard end to the gameplay. Though I'm, I'm only, you know, I'm not even through my first year of the game, so I'm not really sure. But like, but I do want to make well, a distinction, are, uh, though. Oh, go ahead. There is a ahead. hard end and uh, the first harvest moon for the Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, there is one. in like '97 or '98. I'm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. only familiar with the one for the N64, which does. I mean, it's got. It doesn't have a hard ending, but it's got like a point where like you need to have completed everything by, uh, and well, then like, and that's like sort of the ending. Here, here's what I want to make a distinction mm -hmm. about. Like, if a game a game should be like, I don't know. I'm pl right now. I, I just got like the new uh, like Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Fighter Z game, and like I don't really like fighting games in the way I have to like in a super like non natural kind of annoying way. I have to like study to learn how to do the basic mechanics of the fighting because there's yeah. like a lot of like that is just not fun for me. But if a game like like a Metroidvania on the other hand like builds the game in such a way that it forces you to like learn every mechanic as you go, and so it you kind of naturally develop the skill you need to do the techniques as you play through it and like it becomes a real integral part of the experience that you can't just skip over now that and, and then so by the by the when you started playing at the beginning of the game versus at the end you have just naturally developed all these skills as part of the progression of the game now that is something i really enjoy that's my favorite way to do stuff like that i i think um when it uh, yeah, right me too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, th I think when it comes to to guides and stuff if if you can just pick up a game and turn it on and play it mm -hmm. and like get the gist of how the game is supposed to be played enough that you can start to get into it yeah. then i think it's fine i think i think when a game doesn't make sense or isn't fun mm -hmm. unless you use a guide that's that's the point but at which I think a guide the is most like, important the, part, the game is just badly designed. The most point. important part I think of any game is that initial curve to get you like hooked on the game. Like that is like the most yeah. critical moment. And Dark Souls has a pretty steep one, just as one example. Uh, and something like like a, a Metroid, for example, I think is like way lower, which is why it's like easier to ease your way like into a Metroid than like a Dark Souls or something. <laughs> Hi uh, hip Hippo, there there are mm. certain games now where like like with like Minecraft tutorial where, where I just mentioned, uh, there's like there's like sometimes like built in guides like like you know with tried there's the guide where you can go to the materials and you can you know see how do I make this he'll tell you Minecraft there's like a whole like recipe book now but with one game in particular uh Civ uh, Civilization which I've been playing a lot now as you can probably tell the viewers can tell by, by my by my dialect nowadays but uh with the with the there is a 
actual, like, Wikipedia inside the game called the Civlipedia, where you can just, like, press, like, escape, like, go to the menu, and then you can just, like, open that. And there's, like, a fully functioning, like, wiki for Civ that explains, like, the details, the, the, the hard stats and percentages. All that stuff is inside of the game. So, like, it, is, that, is, is that part of the game now? Because it is, like, legal, like, like right from the start, it's, it's telling you to search things up on there. It's, like, you I, know, it's right. encouraged to do that. Well, is that part of the I, game now? I, I think I think it's it's kind of the same as like oh well, I don't know about Civ because I've played it but like things Civ's like so Fan- good, Final Fantasy um, thirteen mm. is like notorious for if you don't read the the data logs yeah, of information yeah. on the things nothing in the story will make sense at all basically which yeah. is yeah. yeah I remember that and it's like. It, it, reading things is boring in a game most of the time unless you're already invested and you want to know more mm-hmm. if you have to read like loads of lo- data logs mm-hmm. it's just sort of annoying so i don't know how it is in, in civ it, i assume it, it's fine th- yeah it, 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 it's it's yeah, yeah. You, you don't need to do it ever. But it's just like, a, you know, like, like it's nice because you can just, like, press, like, oh, like, oh, what is, what's this guy unique ability again? Just, like, you know, press escape, like, look it up. But it feels like, it feels almost like it's, because whatever I do play a game and I'm like, ah, I don't want to figure out how to do this. Just show me the, uh, you know, just, just wiki, wiki, please. I always feel like I'm snidely whiplash, like, like I'm a cartoon villain <laughs> on the run from the fucking FBI and they're going to track me down and shoot me right where I stand. But with Civ, the Civlopedia, it just feels like this is just part of the game. This is just what you're supposed to do. They are giving me this option. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, it, and it feels way different. It, it feels like I'm not a criminal on the run pedophile. It feels like I'm not Dan Schneider. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, there, there's my, my one of my favorite memories growing up though. That this is this is where I didn't feel like Stanley Whippers and I felt like a fucking god. Is when me and my friend were playing Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Incredible, uh, love that game. Fucking great. Uh, uh, we were playing that, and uh, we we you know we just like Google search like Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness like tips and tricks, and then we found this like really really shitty game facts guide which like was like incomplete i guess it just showed you what like shadow pokemon were in each area but not like who had them and like you know who yeah but, but you know in, in that game you had to, specific people had specific pokemon you had to fight those people to get those pokemon so we just knew that they were somewhere in the level so whenever uh, we were in a new level i would like check the fucking you know guys to see like which pokemon are where and I'd be like dude you're not gonna believe this there's a fucking ampros this level and you would just be like what? And then we would search. We, 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 we would battle every single conceivable person. We found that fucking Ampharos. And the moment someone threw out an Ampharos, and then that animation play where the guy like like unloads the glasses and he fucking like zooms in, like mm-hmm. like you know like tactical lens. We would fucking scream at the top of our lungs. We finally found the fucking Ampharos that we needed, and we would throw we throw as many balls as we could. And it was the greatest experience of my life, and I loved it. So that's Incredible. that's it's a time that guy guys hide in the experience tenfold. Uh, well, excellent. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's just another question wrapped. Um, hey, but before we read like another one or two questions, uh, there was one thing that I forgot that uh, we did want to address here. So, okay, slightly serious topic, everybody. But just want to. Are just you wanna... sure you don't want to do this at the, at the end, the, the, I, uh, in the uh, middle of, of questions? Oh, well, uh, I suppose if you want to. I mean, do we have other questions lined up? Uh, there, there's only one more that, that I would like to do. Okay, okay, go for it. Uh, it, it it's from Mozilla Finnegan. Yes. Which games have you played to 100% uh, completion? Is getting 100% a gratifying experience or a complete waste of time? And where is the line stand in between those two? I am a 100% guy. That's, like, yeah. what I do. I, 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 I'm the kind of guy where if I like a game, I will do it to 100%. Famously, that, I, I, think I, 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 I... Well, you know, I was kind of of that opinion until actually fairly recently. Two yeah. games have made me really rethink this whole... 100% thing, and I think that it really just depends on the game. And those games are Breath of the Wild, uh, also Metal Gear Solid 5, and then also uh, Mario Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, God, yeah. Metal Gear. Those games, all three of those, are a total weight. Uh, you know, also, actually, Kingdom Hearts 2, like my favorite game of all time, is 100% not worth completing because you got to do all that gummy ship stuff that sucks dick and is not fun and is not cool or interesting if i um, if i don't 100 percent a game i feel like i haven't really beaten it well it's, no it's, it, I, I, feel, I feel exactly the same way no there are some I, games I that just like I, can you imagine 100 percenting metal gear solid 5 taking photos of every single thing of wildlife bunny hop's that is, video is you, legendary on that front shit. and it you, looks you, you have terrible not- you have not ha- done all the game has to offer. You have okay, not but literally the game. not all of the game is that fun or worth that, your time to I do. Think, sure, I think it, but that it just comes, means you it comes down to game. like ga- games that are built 
to be like have a certain amount of content and that games that are built to end satisfyingly at 70% and then 30% of it is just monotonous boring yeah. stuff padded I out and usually an open shit. world game where you just have yep. to go around and that's, over and over right. that's and how I felt cycle. that's how I felt about Reseteer or um like after yeah. the after the main story and, and even a little bit before like toward the end of the main story and definitely past it cuz like mm. there's bonus content like there's extra characters to unlock but it was like, oh my god, you have to do these fucking dungeons like right. a thousand times. Like the and I'm grind, just, I'm just when they, not up for grinding I, that. I'm I, totally up for 100 percenting a game where like all 100 percent of the content is engaging. Like I did 100 percent of uh, Fallout Three because all mm-hmm. the content in that I found very entertaining. It was interesting. There's lots of quests, and I got the DLC, and it was like fun. But Metal Gear Solid Five, I could never 100 percent that game, and even like when like the main campaign starts getting really grindy, I get pissed off because I'm playing Metroid Prime Two, and I'm at the point where like you have to go back to all the places you've been before and just scan all these corpses, and like they reveal like a secret part of an item you need to like unlock the final part of the game, and like the the most annoying part is I've already scanned all these corpses because I'm like obsessively like scanning and trying to like read all the lore so i have to i already know like where they are but like i don't know where they are so i have to go all the way back and find all yeah. these things all over again that i've well, technically I already mean, done it's infuriating to me it okay we had a, like what is the actual question we're asking because i feel we're coming at it from slightly different perspectives like guys like munchie and gib or, or i don't know whoever was saying it i, I know munchie was like if you soldier through and in fact 100 percent complete a game have you c- absorbed more of its uh, content are you like more he, uh, of a master uh, uh, of all the content here, here, someone who has i've got a perfect metaphor i've got a i've got a perfect metaphor for this yeah it's like um a big old plate of food yeah you know you can eat the entire plate of food even if you know you you get full at like 80 percent and you can you, it feels good to like you know eat all the food and then it's a clean plate and you're like yes i ate the meal because it's there but a lot of the time, it's better to stop when you're full, because it'll be better uh-huh. for you in the long run. You will just feel more satisfied afterwards. You won't sure. feel bloated. You won't feel, like, tired. Mm-hmm. It, will, yeah. it will just be good. And it's a good metaphor, because you can always come back and have more food later. You can always go back and finish that, the game later true. if you feel like it. V- but, but, very true. Okay, but okay. I won't, Play- because fuck that. <laughs> playing a game... Okay, to go with this food analogy, playing a game is, is, is like eating ice cream to me in a cone, where the, the, like, the main game will be the ice cream, but then the, the, the after game to get 100% is the cone, and the yeah. cone is delicious, so of course I'll eat. No, uh, it's like, look, it's like, have you really eaten the ice cream? Like, you can't just throw the cone away. Like, exactly. You can't just throw the, you can't throw the crust guys. of the pizza yeah. away. Like, yeah. You got it, guys. Eat it are thinking way too simplistically about this. The objectively correct answer is it depends. Okay, I mean, it depends when, uh, It depends what question we're asking. Well, uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I guess mean, there are um, some games where I wouldn't feel like that, but in general, if a game is like a story game and has like a campaign... Uh, okay, let, let gamers tap. Yeah, 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 please. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, personally, for me, I, I feel like I used to like... Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to enjoy uh, 100% in games uh, back in the 80s and 90s, mm-hmm. but... Uh, the newer games, they got way too big and they take way too long. And a lot of the extra content mm-hmm. uh, isn't fun, right? Uh, in my opinion. See, so uh, I, for example, like uh, in Chrono Trigger, ah uh, yes, uh, when you get near the end of the game, there's a bunch of side quests that open up that are optional, mm-hmm. and you can do them, and they're all really Those are fun. Great. They all give you really good rewards. Mm-hmm. They all have a lot of good character development, and they add to the story. And the attention that is given to these side quests is almost the same attention they give to the main game. You know, as if the same budget and the same uh, treatment was given to the side mm-hmm. quests. But um, in a lot of modern games, it's obvious the main quest is given a much greater budget, much greater priority, because that's what everyone mm-hmm. plays. And then the side stuff, they figured, well, nobody plays the side stuff except, you know, a couple of people. So they just... Uh, you know, put something together that's uh, usually really repetitive yeah. and tedious yeah. and just to inflate, uh, artificially inflate uh, the playtime. So um, that's why I almost never 100% games anymore, even though I used to 100% yeah. everything. 
Yeah. That's a great example. That's a great it, example. It, it definitely depends on the game, but I'm I'm just saying that like like one hundred percent it means you have conquered that game. There is no bones about it. You have obliterated. Well, it look, completely. I will I, never accept. I will never accept that I have not conquered Kingdom Hearts two because the gummy ship missions are fucking terrible, and I'm not going to waste my time doing right, them. Here's here's the thing about it, like, like it all when, then. I know that they're not good. I know the facts that they are not good and they are a waste of my time. It does time. not matter if it's good or they're not. They're not even sort of relevant to the actual game experience that I care about. Not even okay, kind okay. of. The, the question, the, question the, the feeling Munchie is getting is yeah. just it's the numbers thing. It's yes, like seeing exactly. 100% is very satisfying. Exactly. And um, it, I, I would agree, but I would also say that I get more... Like, I, I guess I'm just able to f go away from a game yeah. that where the number is not 100% just because I've had a lot of experiences where going for the 100% is boring and overall is just a is like bad it's oh, just worse than, than I know trying. I'm kind of we're kind of making different sort of emotional arguments here like for example I'm very busy so I really don't have time to make a hundred argument uh, like a hundred percent game play on like uh, you know fucking Metal Gear Solid 5 or whatever so like I have a reason to want to I want to like justify my gamer cred by saying like no I've effectively done everything even though I have not I mean that game I didn't well, come not close here's, 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 here's a game. I'm just saying like 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 objectively there is code on that disc you have not unlocked I mean, there's always okay. Well, if you mean that's your metric, there's literally going to be like developer code that you have not experienced, no sure. matter well, what he, you do. He, he, but you here, know what I mean. Right, no. I, I understand where uh, Munchie is coming from because I used mm -hmm. to have that kind of like OCD. I gotta yeah. 100%, <laughs> it, yeah, it, 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 it is. sucks. I yeah, you know. <laughs> exactly. And I, I I was trying to do that a lot during the PS2 era when games started to get a lot of padding. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I I was constantly at war with myself. I was like. I really yeah. want 100% this game, but I hate playing it. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> I feel, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, well, well, it's such I a conundrum. So, uh, That's I, how it got I got with Reseteer, played, and eventually it beat me. Yeah. yeah. I played um, Final Fantasy VII for a GRPG video that mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to the end of the game, and I beat Sephiroth and the final boss and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I stopped the meteor. And then there was like post game content yeah, where yeah. you could go fight the the big under like the what were they called ruby and emerald the weapon big stuff. Uh, the weapons yeah the weapons yeah of course and i was like i tried fighting emerald weapon and he was too hard and i was like well yeah. I, it looks like i have to grind well i beat the game i'm done and i didn't i fit i didn't feel the need to complete it beyond what i did and i know a lot of people are like what how could you not do all that and it's like the same with kingdom hearts one i never tried doing like the, I'd never tried getting to Sephiroth to yeah, fight him yeah. in in Kingdom Hearts One. It's hard. It's one hard. because I heard one because I heard that it was like really tough, and I was like, well, I, I beat the game. <laughs> I, it, I'm uh -huh. done. I'm I'm good with that. I, I I feel like it's more satisfying to me, and I don't feel like uh, it invalidates my completing of the game. Or like, oh well, you didn't play exactly everything, therefore your opinion isn't valid. Because I played enough of it. I played at least the whole game. I played to the last boss. I feel like that's enough. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of what uh, I'm. I think uh, the way to look at mm -hmm. it is is um, if um, if you enjoy doing the side stuff and you enjoy hundred one hundred percenting it, then you should do it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't enjoy it, then just don't. do This it. is kind I, of where I, I'm I, coming I mean, from I with agree. this. I feel like, uh, like okay, uh, my emotional response here is that it's like Munchie is making an argument that someone who has like mastered the gummy ship in addition to like all the base gameplay of like kingdom hearts 2 for example would have like moral m more authority that, that's, over kingdom that's hearts not, I, I i i literally have just said that is not a moral necessity oh wait, I, 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 well i think i get it I, okay i think it's like like munchie was saying you there's in the back of your head you know that you haven't experienced a game entirely yeah but the way I see it is that there are so many games that I haven't gotten around to, and I feel like I should sometimes, but I've just sort of... It's the same sort of feeling, like, I can I can let that go. Like, maybe I'll never get around to that game, yeah. maybe I'll never get around to that movie. Um, I don't need to experience them all, mm -hmm. and I don't need to experience everything to 100% completion. Like, here's, I'm as long as I get the gist, and I can talk about it with people. Uh, to me, I, I just feel like uh, it's, it's futile, mm -hmm. you know? Sometimes, yeah. Futile. Yeah. Uh, there's just some games that it's almost impossible to 100% unless you give up your entire mm -hmm. life and just 
playing like, I mean, World of here's a question. Like, uh, here's a question. I, what about a game like Disgaea, where there is literally infinite content? Like, at what point have you yeah, 100%? That's basically what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Well, I tried to 100% that back in oh, the day. Oh, yeah, it can't too. be done. Can't be done. I, what, what I'm saying, it, it was it, so just into look Disgaea. at what I'm saying. It's not like controversial or like like I, i'm i'm not saying that it is good or bad to experience whatever's in the game and i'm not saying that you have to get 100 percent to be an authority or talk about it i'm j i'm just saying the fact that you have not experienced 100 percent the game if you have not completed 100 percent i'm not saying that's a good okay, or but bad the, thing the, the fact, want to experience the it fact what i mean that is true but is there any consequence of this or are you just saying it is no it's just I mean, that it, it doesn't is, feel yeah. Like, yeah, it doesn't feel, you've, and I, you've and I want really to beat in the game. Well, yeah. okay, here's here's what I'm willing to concede. I am definitely not a absolute authority on the Kingdom Hearts 2 gummy ship missions. I am absolutely not, because I have not beaten them. But I am an absolute authority on Kingdom Hearts 2 mainstay, combat, story, all that shit. I, I will concede that. Um... But that's it. This is not a fucking war treaty, Nate. It is a this war is treaty. Not, you don't have to concede authority on certain issues. I, all, all, I, just, I just like seeing numbers go up. That's all I want, Nate. I just want to see numbers go up. Well, oh, fair enough. Th th I certainly... Might, well, what, actually, uh, you, you should really enjoy this guy, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, except it has no end There's to really it, unfortunately. Big numbers in that game. The, yeah. I, could, I could not get into the whole, like, infinite um, procedural content. Thing. The the I, problem with that is that there is no end goal. You have nothing like, to shoot for. It's yeah, yeah, it really was a problem for me. And it's weird because I really like a lot of procedurally generated games like roguelikes mm -hmm. and stuff that you but can But those again, those have an end goal. Those have a win state. Disgaea yeah. basically does not. Which yeah, is but a like with for with me. Disgaea, it's like, well, I already beat the game and now I can just yeah. do all this random extra stuff forever, but like to what end? For me that is completely Who is uninteresting. I, th 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 this is Tactical th this RPG. PS2. This might surprise and baffle and horrify some people. And, yeah. and this is in no way a discouragement of the quality of Kirby 64. Uh -oh. But I, I, I will, and I do not regret any of the moments I spent with that game at all. My understanding it was the pinnacle moment of my life, and it was great. <laughs> but I will say, uh, there were certain shards where I just would fucking rather piss on my cat than play it. That, that <laughs> one fucking level where you have to get the um the the dynamite ability and carry it through like until like the end of the right. level and the dynamite right. ability fucking sucks and you cannot hit shit with it and to traverse <laughs> and, and then like fucking like parry and parkour around bronto birds and wild d's to get to where you <laughs> need to fucking go with the shitty ability you cannot use i remember that actually yeah, yeah it, it was fucking it it was the worst moment of my life but when i beat it i felt so good so, so i feel like the slog and and the uh, you know turmoil they go through for some of the shards yeah. and you know why it, it, it's worth it in my opinion. I, 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 I will, you know, if I like the base game, which I love Kirby 64, I love it. Yeah, I'm happy, you know, I, I, I'm I happy like to concede. I'm happy to concede. I like to it. I'm know. definitely on your side here. when it comes mm -hmm. to like, I don't know, like I do like go for 100% completion on a lot of stuff and would absolutely look down on the people who have not done it. I just mm -hmm. want to kind of judge it on a case-by-case -case basis. Like, for example, sure. getting all the moons sure. in Mario Odyssey is a absolute waste of time. Do not do it. it. You will regret it. It is not worth doing. Because some of them are just not fun. And it is in no way an exercise of, exp of skill. Or, like, what, what you get for doing some of that is, like, just, like, you have to, like, go talk to one character wearing a certain outfit. And, like... That does not give you anything. Like, yes, you have to buy the outfit, so you get, like, a little bit more experience with it. But, like, you already get a moon for just, like, buying every outfit in the game. Like, to me, that's, like, a goal that makes sense. It's, like, this large, big goal. You should get, like, some grand prize for doing that. But the weird way that that game has made the prize for literally every accomplishment a moon totally cheapens and devalues the moons themselves. And did, you see, did you see the Joseph yeah. Anderson video about it? Of course. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, Sounds, I'm with him on a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he had the same complaints about everything gives you a moon. Yeah. I, I, I'm I, never going to play that game. But I, but I watched, but I watched that video once. like three times. Well, you sure. Yeah. Sunshine is better because Sunshine is the best 3D Mario. Literally objective fact. Sunshine is the fucking best. Uh, I, I would like to close this out by okay. I think, reciting a story that I've said before, but it, it's it's relevant okay. to this, and, and, and it's incredible, and I am a god. Mm -hmm. Bow fucking down right now. Uh, I was going on a, I was going on like a road trip. I knew that I'd be in the car, and I, you know, I couldn't do anything else. So, and I brought my DS along, and so I, but I didn't have any games for it for you know reasons. So I went to GameStop, and I, I, I bought Kirby Superstar 
Star Ultra for mm-hmm. the road trip. And yeah. on that road trap, uh, road tra- that rat trap, <laughs> yeah. uh, going from uh, my, my location, which is like, you know, seven hours away or something, mm-hmm. uh, and, and coming back, I completed Cur- uh, Kirby 64, one, or, you know, Kirby Ultra, uh, Ultra uh, 100% Three times on it, on all save files. Whoa! And then I did that. I brought it back to the GameStop and I turned it. And I got my money back. So I <laughs> in, in one day I, I completed all the files one hundred percent and I turned it and got my fucking money back. That was all. That's incredible. I, 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 I used it like a fucking whore, and, and I got my money. <laughs> See, okay, that's the thing. It, it is important. Okay, and this is the thing. Some games absolutely use the 100% completion system as a way to make sure that the players experience all the content that is worth doing. Some of them definitely do it that way. For example, I would argue that, like, most Castlevanias do it that way, where, like, the uh, the RPG ones, like, for example, um, getting all the souls in Aria of Sorrow, I think is absolutely worth doing. A lot of them are a grind and are really annoying, but you get to experience meaningful new aspects of that game when you push yourself to get, like, fully, com- I think that the actual percentages, it might be, like, 200 Hundred and ten percent is what you get when oh, you actually fuck. have done literally everything in that game, or, or something like that. Um, like when the game does a, it that way. An example for me, uh, yeah. Uh, and I think a positive example for me mm-hmm. is actually a Super Mario World. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. Um, because uh, there's a lot of hidden levels in that game, but all the hidden levels are just as good as the the mm-hmm. main level. Exactly. So sometimes exactly. they're even better. So I if you 100% Starbucks that shit. game, you will truly experience everything. And like, what if, what uh, if, that's worth what if Super Mario World had a mechanic where you have to like, go collect seeds, and then you come back and you plant them in pots, and then you have to like, come back to the level after like, 24 IRL hours have passed. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I mean, those kind of mechanics are not fun most of the time. Sometimes they can be. Sometimes they can be. But again, I just want to judge it on a case-by-case basis. Gummy ships, terrible don't care about them. Oh. Waste of time. All this is coming from a guy who has not played single player games at all for like, 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 legitimately. Like, like I've never played a single player game seriously in a really fucking long time. Like, like a year. <laughs> I don't play uh-huh. multiplayer player games because because fucking multiplayer uh, games master race. I love those. Fair enough. Okay. Well, I, you know I, what? I, I think it's all the questions. I think. Hey, would yeah. Would you like we... to say your, your your serious gambit here? Okay. Well, the thing is, this isn't this isn't actually like that serious of a thing. It, it just, yeah. so I I felt comfortable saying it before because it's not actually like a major issue or anything. I just wanted to yeah, slip yeah. it in. But nonetheless, sure, sure. so so here's the the thing, guys. So everyone's been commenting on like when's Jesse coming back? Where's Jesse? Et cetera, et cetera. Since the whole monkey thing, and like I hear what you're saying, guys. I, I understand where you're coming from. Like, why isn't Jesse back? But here's what you got to understand, everybody. Jesse was under no impetus to actually return to the show after Mumkey left or anything. It was just if he then chose to. It was, it was a separate issue. So mm. right now, Jesse doesn't want to come back on the show. He's doing his own stuff. Do not expect him back. He may come back someday, or he may not. It is up to him, and do not count on it. Do not have expectations. So everybody commenting, where is Jesse? This is your answer. He's not coming back anytime soon. He has made that explicitly clear. Mm-hmm. He is going his own way, the proud MGTOW that he is. So, and, and, and don't go bother him. We, yeah. There's no bad blood here. There we is literally well. no bad blood. Yeah, yeah. We have been having more fun conversations with Jesse than at any time in the last like six months. I have, He's still been, our friend. He is a friend. He's in our chat. We talk to him. Like, there is literally no problem here other than Jesse just isn't interested in being on the show. So there's no conspiracy. You can go ask the guy on Twitter, but please don't bother him. Like, he, it's his own, yeah. you know, you can ask, like, this is just it. This is just how it is. He just doesn't want to. And we bear him no ill will as a result. So, you know, chill out, everybody. You can stop asking all the questions over and over <laughs> and over again because this is the answer. He's the, the, just the- not interested right now. To be fair, it is our fault for not co- commenting on earlier. But but the where's Jesse comments can can, can please cease. You, you, can you, stop yeah. you can stop if, them now. You can stop them now. If people keep asking, then just link them this part right now, and then then that'll be the answer. This is the official PCP statement. Yeah, yeah, just just so nobody no thinks blood. just so nobody mm-hmm. thinks that he's like not invited for whatever reason. It's not yeah. it's not like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we continue to have an open invitation anytime he wants to come back. And in no way is this an attempt to, like, guilt him in any way. Mm-hmm. He chooses not to come back. That's perfectly fine. Sometimes people are busy who are regulars and just don't want to be on the episode because they're doing other stuff. I consider mm-hmm. it like that. He's just doing his mm-hmm. own thing. There's exactly. nothing nothing to be worried about, guys. Just maybe he'll be back. I know a lot of people want to see him on, but unfortunately, you know, it's, it's his decision. And please mm-hmm. respect it. And, uh, mm-hmm. and again, you can stop with the questions. Like, we got it. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> yeah. uh, this has been a great episode. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tavern, for being on. 
It's been a real treat. Uh, I'm, I'm always delighted to, to be on here. Thank you. Oh, great. It was really good. I'm so glad we finally yeah. got a chance to talk. We've been kind of admiring your work from afar for a long time. And, man, I, I hope maybe we can we can uh, twist your arm to make some more content on that YouTube sometime because, man, I mean, do I miss all I, it. All I can say is that if there was more, I'd watch it. That, that's, you know. <laughs> well, I do, uh, I do intend in, on making more. So well, perfect. Is there Everyone anyone? check out his channel in the description. Yeah. Uh, please subscribe to him. He deserves more subs. He's a great guy. Gamers Tavern Show. And, and last, here's a last question for you. What would you recommend as your own content that you think people should watch? What would be your content of choice? Oh, you mean me? Yeah, like, yes. it, would you recommend, like, people watch your Rocket Knight or your Sonic? Or if people were going to get into your channel, what do you think would be a good place to start? Well, uh, my opinion, uh, which I might not be mm -hmm. the same as... People who watch me. Sure, sure. Uh, I think my best stuff is the most recent stuff, the Sonic 3 uh, and Knuckles playthrough. So start with like yeah. part yeah. one of that. Uh, let's link that in the description uh, so people have a place to That's the point when I started to know what I was doing. Before then, I was just kind of... <laughs> You know. I don't know, man. Those Rocket Knight adventures are pretty legendary. <laughs> I, I love, but, I love them all. They've all got, a, they've all got a slightly different like tone to them, but they're all, they're all great. And I'll, I'll just put them on, I'll just put them on, uh, you know, like the full playlist and just go through the whole series. Uh, and I don't want to underplay when I get the fancy when I get the wild hair. We have really loved your content, especially Jesse, Gibb, and Ben have been like your champions out here talking about how great you are. And loving your stuff. And, I can't uh, overstate <laughs> just how great yeah. I think it is. Just how much I, I, I've gotten out of it and, and uh, how I think uh, the other people would, too, if they knew about, if they knew about it. And, and, and Gib, I want to prompt you. What, what, I mean, what do you have to say about this man and his catalog of work? Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just really good. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, a type of, it's a type of comedy video that just I've never seen. Like I don't see people making really dry <laughs> pun laden mm -hmm. videos of just it's. Th there's no like ego there. It's just yeah. here I am talking about this thing and oh there's there's funny and this is what <laughs> you do with this boss and here's a pun and here's a pun. It's like it's 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 very unique. Like I haven't seen that before and I I, I really I was really happy when I found it. It's it's like yeah. if Hippo's best pun tweets were read by your tax attorney. <laughs> excellent. An excellent yeah so, so so great that's one way to put it yeah. <laughs> well guys great. what a lovely episode this has been uh thanks yeah. again gamers tavern for joining us uh maybe we'll have, we'll have you back sometime soon again i, I yeah. would sure love to talk to you again all right thanks for having me yeah. anytime dude anytime we're, all right, we're gonna be everybody. trying to be more guests uh so yeah yeah, so yeah let us know if you like time. having guest guys because we're really yeah, we're really looking to mix it up and we've got a couple people in mind and uh, suggest, you got guess, I guess, but we're fucking free spirits. We, we don't need that shit, but, but do it if you want, I guess. I, indeed. That'd be indeed. nice, yeah. Uh, remember, right. everybody, uh, follow us at TBCrastinators. Uh, questions on Saturdays, hashtag AskPCP for those. Join the Discord, patreon.com slash theprocrastinators. $1 to get into the patron lunch. $5 for those sweet bonus episodes. Gamergate versus Drumpf. You want to get in on that. <laughs> uh, and the whole gang, of course. Uh, and we will see you soon. Thanks for joining, everybody. Bye bye. 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 Salutations. See you later.